The boy wakes up and can't believe he's still alive. He recognizes the place where he has found himself. It's a university dormitory. The boy is not dead, but has been reborn. He doesn't remember why he has so many injuries. There is no spiritual energy in his body. His 30,000 years of cultivation are gone. His enemies are truly ruthless. The boy grew up in the high and respected realm of the sword. When he was given the title of Divine King of the Realm, countless experts from the Yongjue dynasty besieged him. In the end, it all ended in exhaustion and hatred. Perhaps this room could not withstand the power of so many experts at once. The boy returned to his time as a student at Yunhai University. He was reborn to the misfortune of his enemies. The time when he would regain his powers would be the time of the death of the Yunjue dynasty. The doors to the room swung open and a beautiful girl entered. She was unaware that Wu Fu was already awake. Her name was Li Meng Yao. The boy remembered why his body was scarred. The girl had come to return the gifts he had given her because they had broken up. Wu Fu was beaten because he tried to ask Li Meng Yao why the girl had left him. As a result, he was humiliated in front of everyone and also insulted He Tian Hao. This guy knew the protagonist's father well because he worked in his father's company. Because Wu Fu insulted He Tian Hao, his father was directly fired from He Tian Hao's father's company. The boy asked the girl if she had anything else to say. Li Meng Yao is outraged that the ex-boyfriend dared to insult Tian Hao at a time when he himself is so insignificant. She suggests that he look at himself in the mirror. Tian Hao wants the protagonist and his father to kneel before him and apologize. Only then can Wu Fu's father continue to work for the company. The protagonist's whole family depends on his father's salary to clean the toilets. The boy can't believe that this girl really liked him once, but he has memories of those feelings. In his opinion, men don't just go down on their knees. He and his father aren't going anywhere. Li Meng Yao thinks this decision is wrong. The protagonist asked the girl to tell He Tian Hao to meet him whenever he wants. The girl came to deliver this message because of their previous relationship. In her opinion, the man doesn't know what's good for his family. So she wishes him dead. Li Meng Yao leaves, slamming the door behind her. For Wu Fu, this means that he must heal his wounds and increase his strength before he meets Tian Hao. Luckily, he remembers all the cultivation techniques. The most appropriate technique is the art of purification, Qi of the Nine Underworlds. How quickly he will enter the perfect realm of Li is a matter of time. Wu Fu must begin to heal his wounds. Above the protagonist's head, his star sword appeared. The boy thought the weapon had been taken by others and had no hope of getting it back. It is a sacred weapon before entering the modern realm of Qi. It is too dazzling. If the other cultivators discovered this sword, Wu Fu would be in trouble. His sword is severely damaged. The protagonist's wounds have healed. Now he can test his current strength. He decides to do it right in the room, a common fighting technique that actually carries a sharp blade of Qi. Wu Fu doesn't even apologize. The protagonist sits in a tree and cultivates energy. His current energy is limited on the ground. It won't be a problem for him to cultivate better quality Qi. At the moment, the density of Qi is too low for further progress. The guy saw four guys in the park. He was looking for Wu Fu. One of them told the others that his comrade liked to come here, but now the place looked empty. He suggested that they come back tomorrow and look again. The three guys didn't like that. They think the man is cheating them. The tall guy is Wang Meng, the main character's roommate and his only friend on earth from a previous life. Wang Meng knows that Wu Fu has recovered from his injuries. He begs Hao's men to let him go, but they remind him that they didn't break Wu Fu's legs last time because of his sincerity. In their opinion, he has dug his own grave by playing tough in front of his fiancée. There is no point in asking for mercy this time. They think Wang Meng has betrayed them and a fight breaks out. The man says that Wang Meng's dog is really a greyhound. He wants to hit the dog, but the owner defends her. The man says that Wu Fu has been lying in bed for days and will die if he's beaten again. Now the group realize that they were tricked into bringing him here in the first place. They decide to beat up the main character's neighbor. Wu Fu stands up for him. Wu Fu asks the bully to leave before he gets angry. Wang Meng doesn't understand why his friend has come and asks him to run away but the protagonist suggests that Wang Meng run away. Tian Hao is outraged that Wu Fu dares to show up and hurt his brother. 
They want to beat up the protagonist. His neighbor insists that the boy should run away. Wu Fu thinks that only Tian Hao's gang should run away. A fight ensues. The protagonist successfully fends off all attacks. He disarms the third brother. Hao is convinced that this is impossible. A few days ago, his opponent was weak, but today he is already very strong. Wu Fu asks him to remember how it was before. He lets Tian Hao go. He promises to remember everything and leaves with his brothers. An elder passed by and thought that Wu Fu was making fun of the weak. He decided to teach the boy a lesson. The man didn't think it was professional. He decided to keep the hero company and fight him. Tian Hao said that Wu Fu had already let them go. And Wang Ming realized that they had been mistaken for the bad guys. Wu Fu thinks the neighbor should go. The protagonist is convinced that there is no shame in running away if you are not in a position to hit someone. Wang Meng leaves. He wishes his friend luck. The elder thinks it's humiliating to fight with ordinary people against a cultivator. What he doesn't know is that these guys have decided to make trouble for themselves. Maybe the perfect power of the Qi realm will be disturbed by a few people. Wu Fu deftly dodged the attack. The elder realized that it was the imperfect Qi power. It was a bad thing. Wu Fu didn't take advantage of it to attack. The elder wasn't sure if the man was telling the truth. The man's cultivation is two levels higher than the protagonist's, but his spiritual energy is very weak. It's a trauma. Senior's energy channels are damaged, so he can't use all of his power. Now, most of the damage to his energy channels has been repaired. A simple cultivation of perfect key has this ability. A trace of blood could be seen on the elder's lips. His subordinates saw this and decided to intervene. They blame everything on Wu Fu and decide to capture him. The guys see that he's a cultivator. They are not intimidated by the situation because they have guns. A shot rings out, but Wu Fu dodges the bullets. The older man ordered them to get out. The man would not allow them to open fire. Instead, he slapped his subordinate across the face. He thanked the chief for healing his wounds. The elder regretted the misunderstanding. Subordinates do not understand why their boss apologizes to Junior. Wu Fu could see that the man had no ill intentions. Otherwise, the outcome could have been very different. The older man liked the joke, but the man wasn't joking at the moment. The man thinks that Wu Fu is indeed a cultivator of perfect qi. He makes a request to the young man. The man has a daughter who also has blocked channels. He hopes that Wu Fu will help her. His subordinate says that even Du Xuan Yuan could not heal the young lady's blocked energy channels. The boy is not sure if Wu Fu will ever be able to do this. The young man thinks that the protagonists are just a rogue Jiang Hu. In his opinion, the boss should reconsider. Senior's subordinate turns to Wu Fu with the thought that even the quasi grandmaster couldn't do anything. The boy suggests that the protagonist has had enough of life and has decided to cheat them. The young man is punched in the face by his boss for saying this. The older man resents his subordinate's arrogance. He thinks he is a scoundrel who has suddenly become an expert. The older man asks Wu Fu to ignore his subordinate's rudeness. The protagonist does not remember that he agreed to help. The man's bodyguard does not let up. He calls Wu Fu an ungrateful brat. The elder sees that the protagonist has outstanding abilities. He thinks that spiritual energy alone is not enough to cultivate. The boy agrees with him. The man told him that he had a villa in the Tianfu settlement that had an abundance of spiritual energy. He offered his savior to come and cultivate there any time in exchange for helping his daughter. This is Mrs. Yong's favorite Ayala, only for the cultivation of perfect Qi. The high spiritual energy content sounds tempting to the protagonist. The elder adds that it's very peaceful. No one will be a distraction. If Wu Fu can heal the man's daughter, he can ask him for anything, villa or otherwise. The man thinks the problem with the blocked meridians is no big deal. The man has promised to bother Wu Fu soon to meet his daughter. The protagonist leaves his number with the older man. The bodyguard promises to kill Wu Fu if he does not cure Mrs. Yong. The man's phone rings. The unknown man was angry that Wu Fu had not apologized and dared to beat up his men. The man assumed it was Li Ming Yao. His companion gave him 10 minutes to come and rescue the dog and Wang Meng. Wu Fu was afraid to see him, and now the man would come to him himself. The men with the bats were hiding around the corner. They've already beaten Wu Fu once, 
but this time, even if the guy's body is made of iron, he'll be incapacitated. Boss Howe tells them to stay back or they will be splattered with blood. Boss is sitting in the company of Li Meng Yao. Wang Meng and the protagonist's dog are tied up in the corner. Hu Wu Fu arrived at the meeting. As soon as he entered, he was attacked by men with bats. The boy easily fought off the attackers. Oi Meng Yao remembers that only yesterday, Wu Fu was lying in bed with no strength. But the boy says that was yesterday. Hao's bodyguards think that the protagonist has steel armor inside. Wu Fu likes this comparison. Li Meng Yao can't believe that her ex-boyfriend has recovered so quickly. He definitely prepared himself. Wan. Wu Fu came to rescue his friend and his dog. First of all, he freed the husky. Wang Meng thought he had been forgotten. But the protagonist saved him too. Wu Fu was attacked from behind by another bodyguard, Tian Hao, but he failed. The boss saw that the guy could fight well, but that strength was not enough to fight him. He ordered Wu Fu to be beaten to death. The boys rushed to fight, but the protagonist pushed them all away. He offered to fight Tian Hao and his ex-girlfriend, but they refused, nodding their heads. Now they were even. Wang Meng can't believe it's still his old friend. Li Meng Yao doesn't think Wu Fu is cool and omnipotent because of his skills, because scum will always be a toss-up. Hao tells her to shut up. The girl is addicted to being shouted at because of her ex-boyfriend. She wished Wu Fu would die. The protagonist's dog pissed on the girl's leg. A stranger enters the room. She is outraged that Wu Fu has made a mess on her property. The girl wants to settle the matter with a fight. She sees that Wu Fu's sword manifestation is very destructive. She's surprised to see so much trouble coming from just one cultivator of perfect qi. Tian Hao warns her that this is the guy who beat up all the guards. Husky decided to rub the girl's leg. Wu Fu notices that the girl is very fast. She outruns him by a bullet. He's definitely no match for her. Wu Fu blocks the blow. Li Meng Yao doesn't know when he became so strong. Tian Hao isn't surprised that Wu Fu stopped unexpectedly because he was a cultivator. The girl thought that the protagonist would not be able to resist anymore. Wu Fu thinks her talent is amazing, but her mistake is all too obvious to him. Now he is not only a cheat, but also a pervert in the girl's eyes. She can't use her spiritual energy. It is Wu Fu who has blocked it. The girl asked for things to go back to the way they were before. The protagonist promises to do so, but not now. Tian Hao doesn't know what his opponent wants. The girl insists that this is the Zhu family's territory and they have no right to make a mess here. Wu Fu asked the guards to tell her who was causing the trouble. They told her that it was Tia Hao who made them fight with Wu Fu. She realized that she had been lied to. Wu Fu offered Hao an apology, but he refused. He was then punched in the face. This made him very angry. He promised to get rid of the protagonist and ruin his life. Wu Fu explained that he could find him any time if he wanted revenge, but now he had to apologize. The daughter of the owner of the establishment was upset that Tian Hao couldn't apologize for causing a ruckus on her family's property. The man struggles to apologize. Wu Fu orders him to leave. Li Qi Mo Yao ran after Tian Hao to calm her down, but the man rejected her. It wasn't easy for the girl to hold on to the big rich tough guy. She can't let Wu Fu ruin it. She thinks her ex-boyfriend is a bastard. The protagonist says goodbye to the girl with the hammers, as he still has things to do. He thinks they will meet again later. The girl remembers that Wu Fu hasn't unsealed her yet. She thinks it's possible that the guy is in the realm of perfect key. He Tian Ha comes to see his friends. They notice that he's been beaten up. The boys don't know who is brave enough to do such a thing. Tian Hao asks his brother to help him teach someone a lesson. Brother Biao is surprised the second young master of the He family has been taunted by someone. This person probably doesn't know that he's older brother Tian Gang. The younger brother says that he was beaten by some scum without his knowledge. He asks that Wu Fu not be killed too quickly. Tian Hao wants the protagonist to know the consequences of hurting him. The protagonist's enemies have lived for a thousand years. Even if they have trained the atmosphere, he must remain calm and take his time. Members of the school basketball team enter the classroom. They are surprised to see Wu Fu still going to class. The boys think he's crazy. Tian Hao's older brother is a member of the basketball team. Wu Fu insulted him and didn't think about the consequences. The main character's classmates think that the class is never quiet because of him. 
The students think that Wu Fu should apologize and never be seen by Tian Hao again. As a result, Wu Fu Yi is pitted against everyone in his class in the basketball club. The classmates don't agree. They don't want to take the blame for Wu Fu. For them, the protagonist is like a mouse trying to break a bowl of porridge. If Wu Fu wins, they'll leave him alone. Wang Meng begs him not to accept the challenge as he has never played basketball before. Wu Fu thinks the game is too easy for him. If he loses, the protagonist will have to call him daddy. And if he wins, it will be the other way around. All the students want to watch this competition. Wu Fu realizes that he can accept defeat, but it won't be an insult. For him, it doesn't matter who wins or loses. The important thing is not to give up too quickly. The crowd doubted that the fat man and the two gnomes were capable of winning. Zhou Shun's name was shouted from the stands. He is the president of the basketball club and his father is the principal of the school. It must have been a crushing defeat. Zhou Shun is Tian Hao's best friend and Wu Fu insulted both of them. His classmates think he will be expelled. There is no point in winning or losing. Both sides sit down. The game lasts 30 minutes. The team with the most points wins. The game starts. Three balls have been thrown into Wu Fu's team ring. Zhou Shun cheered from the stands. Wang Mensch thought they had no chance, as even the referee had given the ball to Zhou Shun at the start of the game. Wu Fu reassured his friend that the game had only just begun. Wu Fu proved to be too fast. He bypassed many opponents and left them behind. He scored several goals at once. The crowd did not expect Wu Fu to win so quickly. The score is now 17 to 20. Zhu Xun is furious. Wu Fu has prevented him from scoring. The spectators can see that the guys from the basketball club are literally smeared. Nobody expected the protagonist to hide his skills. Now it's just the two of them against the eight. Zhou Shun scores another goal and suggests that Wu Fu change the team or show his skills. There's no way the two of them can win against the eight. The basketball team cheats openly. There are 10 minutes left in the game. The battle has just begun. Members of Zhou's team prevent Wu Fu from playing, but the boy breaks free and prevents his team from scoring. Zhu Xun hasn't noticed that the opponent is in front of him. Wu Fu scores with his side of the field. The basketball team thinks it's all a joke. Zhou thinks it's all a projection of the long circle. For him, it is impossible for his opponent to succeed. The score is 35-23. Wang Meng is excited about what's happening. Zhou Shun begs to stop Wu Fu, but to no avail. The crowd cheers for the two-man team. The basketball team believes that no matter how fast you are, it's too late to change anything. Wu Fu's team wins 42-31. Some students still think he's rubbish and don't understand how he can be so strong. The man Zhou Shun hated embarrassed him. The embarrassed team wanted to leave the field, but Wu Fu asked if they had forgotten anything. The protagonist wants his brother Zhou to call him dad. The members of the basketball club seem to be fed up with Wu Fu's life. Daddy can't accept a son who doesn't show loyalty. Zhu doesn't want to abide by the terms of the game. A fight ensues and the protagonist wins. Xu Zhen and Wu Fu are left to face each other. The captain of the basketball club wants to run away because of the loss, but he has to pay the bill. Zhou realizes that his opponent is very strong. He's sure that the protagonist will regret this action. Wu Fu insists, and Zhou utters the word daddy. The protagonist says that there is no more useless son in the world than Zhou and walks away. Wang Meng thinks that his friend should be wary of the great connections of the losers. Wu Fu cultivates energy. There are three kinds of nine meditations. They are divided into low, medium, and high order gasification environments. You need to find a place with a strong aura to overcome the first level of perfection. Wang Meng enters the room and announces that the class is going on a hike. He offers to join them. Their campsite is near Tianfu Haoyuan. It is surrounded by mountains and lakes. The nature there is very beautiful. More importantly, there will be beautiful girls there. Wu Fu explained the name of the place. Wang Meng added that it was a meeting place for most of the rich people in Yunhai. There is a beautiful and famous place there. Wu Fu had almost passed the first stage, and it was also a great place. The protagonists agreed, but asked a friend to take care of the registration. Wang Meng was happy to help. 
the class went on a field trip. The classmates are not happy that the two friends went with them. Meng Yao's girlfriend thinks that Wu Fu is quite impressive because he not only insulted Tian Hao, but also defeated Joy Tan. The girl said that she was just playing with her ex's feelings. She thinks he is unworthy. Meng Yao bets that Wu Fu won't live more than a few days. The guy ignores these remarks. The girl is sure that her boyfriend will make sure that Wu Fu won't be able to get out of bed again. Wang Meng looks at the scenery. He sees an estate that deserves the title of the most luxurious in Yuan Hai City. Wu Fu tells the driver to stop the bus. His friend warns him that they are not there yet. The boy replies that he has to stop at his friend's house. He tells his friend not to worry and promises to find him later. In Meng Yao's opinion, he likes to play tough even if he doesn't mean it. His classmates think the same. They shout after him to make sure he doesn't get lost. Wang Meng realizes that many people like to look down on people. Wu Fu calls him and tells him that he is already there. The man tells her that his daughter is waiting for him and that he will now go out to meet the guest. The protagonist is invited inside. The spiritual energy in the mansion is quite dense. It seems to the boy that this will be enough to make a leap into the realm of Qi. The elder introduces his daughter, Wu Fu. It turns out that they know each other. It's hard to believe, but it's the same girl from the bar. She is shocked that her father is introducing her to the pervert. Wu Fu can't believe she's the one Xu Yingshan was talking about, and the girl can't believe her father is calling this guy master. The guy asks not to look for other people. It's just him here. Mrs. Yong is suspicious of him. She thinks the man is up to something. She won't be afraid of Wu Fu because of his skills. Wu Fu explains that he has come to heal her. The girl does not believe that a simple key cultivator can help her. Her father tells her not to judge a book by its cover, as this cultivator's skills are far beyond the ordinary. The girl says that only her ass is out of bounds and that Wu Fu is a common pervert. Xu Yingshan has prepared the medical components, although the main characters did not ask him to do so. Wu Fu thinks this is a very generous gesture. It's one of the excellent materials to cultivate. Mrs. Yong insists that the guy is not only a pervert, but also a cheat. She will be watching closely. Wu Fu is sure that the elder's daughter's problems are not that big and that these materials are not really needed. The girl says that even the grandmaster her grandfather hired couldn't cure her. According to her, the protagonist's tongue is too long for a mere key cultivator. The man's guard thinks the boy is a petty crook. The gentleman wonders if it was just an accident. The elder's daughter's meridians had been blocked for years, not to mention the Grand Master of Primordial Spirits. Not even an expert could cure it. Wu Fu considers himself a deserving expert in retribution. He doesn't believe that a mere primordial spirit can be better than him. The boy uses force to heal the girl. At this point, her father fears for her life. He wants to know who Wu Fu really is. Ching Ching's spiritual energy is no longer blocked. She is healed. Xu Yingshan orders his guard to put down his weapon. He admits that he was rude. Wu Fu proves to be undeniably capable and mysterious. The older man wants to know who the man's teacher is. The protagonist remembers that in his past life, when he was burning, the teacher came to save him from death. The boy reveals that his teacher still hasn't come to earth. The old man was surprised. He replied that Wu Fu could not speak if he did not want to. The girl assumes that he is an alien. As promised, Xu Yingshan gave his daughter's savior the key to the house. He added that Wu Fu could count on his help if she ever had any problems, as he still had connections in the city of Yunhai. Ching Ching is very fond of the house and doesn't want to leave. She asks her father to give the boy some other kind of gift. The father asks his daughter not to behave like a child. Wu Fu says that he is only here for cultivation and that the family can stay here if they want. Wang Meng sits on a park bench and enjoys being young. He looks at the pretty girls, but they notice him and leave. The guy is a little upset because his friend is late. Maybe he got lost. Wang Meng saw Xiao Ha. It was his friend's dog. The dog knocked some expensive things out of the woman's hands. Wu Fu apologized and offered to pay for what his pet had broken. The girl said that even if she sold Wu Fu, it would not be enough. The classmates added that the protagonist had a friend in Tianfu and that he would not mind the small expense. People have begun to judge him as a rich man who behaves as he pleases. The girl thinks he's really pretending to be cool. 
Wang Meng apologized to the girls again. Wu Fu held out the money and asked if it was enough. His classmates couldn't believe their eyes. Li Meng Yao can't wait to see how her ex lives without money, a poor scum, copying others and just pretending to be cool. She approached Wu Fu and asked him what he was up to. The boy warned her that if she wanted to play with him, he Tianhao would be the underwear. He told the girl to watch her tongue. Meng Yao would let him be arrogant for a few more days and then her new boyfriend would make him regret it. Many clouds were gathering in the sky. The bus wasn't due until tomorrow morning and the boys didn't know where to wait out the rain. Meng Yao called her boyfriend to come and pick her up. He promised to come back later, but the girl could only take a few people. Wu Fu said he had a house in Tianfu Haoyuan and offered to shelter them from the rain. No one believed him. Wang Meng asked if it was true. The man replied that he had just got it and they could go there if they wanted. Meng Yao offered to go and see if it was true. The class went to the gate of the house. The girl saw the guards and said that Wu Fu was about to be embarrassed. The boys thought that he would continue to sneak around. They were sure that they had better consider the option of going home and hope that Wu Fu didn't think of anything else. Wang Meng suggested that they go back. The guard addressed the protagonist as Mr. Wu. Everyone was shocked because they thought it was impossible. The classmates entered the courtyard. Wang Meng thought the mansion was a good place to pick up girls. Wu Fu invited everyone in. No one expected that it would turn out to be true. When Meng Yao met the main character, he was a stinking waste. She had no idea that the guy could hide such a big mansion. Wu Fu told the guard that all these people were his friends, except for the red-haired girl. Momentum was placed outside the mansion. Meng Yao complains to her current boyfriend and asks him to kill his ex. Tian Hao has already come up with a plan. The guy wants revenge for Wu Fu daring to hit him. Perfect face. The classmates wanted to be photographed in such a luxurious mansion as soon as possible. One boy suggested that it was the mansion of Xu Qingqing's third year elder sisters. The classmates asked the girl standing on the first floor who owned the mansion, but she was silent. Someone said she looked like a sexy hotel manager. Wang Meng wondered how his friend could have hidden the mansion so carefully. It's late and Wu Fu tells his guests to choose a room and get some rest. The girl thinks that Wu Fu might be kicked out of here if he falls asleep. She doesn't know how the poor guy managed to buy the mansion in Tianfei Haoyuan. She's sure the house belongs to Xu Qingqing. Wu Fu agreed that the house belonged to the Xu family, but now it is his. The classmates think they should ask the real owner for permission to stay in the mansion. They want to ask Qingqing's Qing's older sister for permission. Wu Fu has kindly allowed them to stay in this house and they should not make the situation uncomfortable. The boy said that if they didn't want to stay, they could leave. Wang Meng would show them where the exit was. The girls were annoyed that the elder sister didn't say anything. They did not understand who their classmate thought he was. In their opinion, he liked to play the cool guy. Finally, the elder sister turned to the boys. Ching Ching shouted at the girl that she had to get down. She started to make excuses, saying that it was Wu Fu who called her. Ching Ching clarified that it wasn't the guy who told her to get out. The lady confirmed that this was Wu Fu's mansion and that the people he told to get out should leave. They were shocked again. The girl offered to escort them to the exit herself. All but Wang Meng left. Ching Ching could not sleep because of the noise made by Wu Fu's guests. Wang Meng thought that his friend was dating a rich hottie, Wu Fu's energy. He had entered the middle stage of the Qi realm. It had taken him three years to reach the Qi realm in his previous life. He did not expect that it would take him only a few days to reach the middle stage. Xiao Ha lalazed and called his master outside. The star sword manifested. The boy thought his dog had found something. Xiao Ha found the hilt of the star sword. In his previous life, Wu Fu had looked through many stars just to create a single star sword. He didn't think he would be able to see the blade after his rebirth. The boy was happy to see the sword return. The real star sword he had created was coming back. Wu Fu laughed ominously, for after he finished the star sword, his enemies would be waiting for him to die. It makes absolutely no difference whether you have attained perfection in martial arts or have been ordained in Heven. He will destroy everyone.
the president of the martial arts club, returned to the classroom. She had rested long enough. It was time to return. This is Ching Ching. She asked the girls if any of them knew Wu Fu. One of the club members did. Wu Fu is a freshman transfer student. He also insulted Hei Tian Hao. The moment he was surrounded by people outside the school gate, it seemed like it was time for him to die. Ching Ching said she didn't know him. She thinks he should die. Wu Fu was surrounded by some big guys with bats. One of them is Tian Hao's brother Biao. Wu Fu tells them to hurry up and start fighting, or he will have a lesson. The guys with the bats attacked the protagonist, but he successfully fended them off. Wu Fu thought that Tian Hao would hire someone who really knows how to fight, but it turned out to be a bunch of wimps. Brother Biao thought that the one who punched the second young master of the Hei family in the face would not be so easy. The two boys catch the protagonist. Brother Biao is confident that no one would dare oppose him. Xiao Ha desperately defends her master. She bites the big man's leg. In return, he throws her aside and promises that her master will spend the rest of his life in bed. Ching Ching asked the girls to call an ambulance for the bandits. Because the truth is that Wu Fu is not a brat. The boy began to free himself from the bandits' clutches. Brother Biao thinks he's still trying to play tough. Wu Fu scattered the thugs in different directions. The big guy tried to hit the guy, but was hit back. Other bandits ran to help him, but they suffered the same fate. The gang members don't understand how the guy can be considered scum, as he's more like the underworld. Wu Fu orders the boys to pick up Brother Biao and follow him. One guy tries to excuse himself by saying that it is his grandmother's wedding day. A girl runs into the martial arts club and reports that Wu Fu has not taken Brother Biao to meet Tian Hao. Ching Ching thinks that the He family should pray that He Tian Gang will be able to return to Yuan High School soon. Zhou Shun is surprised that his friend hired Da Biao to take out Wu Fu. He is convinced that the protagonist's life is really over. Ming Yao reads that Wu Fu thanks Tian Hao for letting him live to this moment. She thinks that from now on there will be no more students called Wu Fu at Yunhai University. According to them, people like him don't deserve to be prayed for when they die. Suddenly the door opens. Wu Fu, carrying Dia Biao, enters. He asks who the young men are looking for, him or their friend. Tian Hao doesn't understand how this is possible. The boys did not like the fact that the freshmen did not knock before entering. They were outraged that Wu Fu ignored the senior students. The boys ask him to get down. They warn that they won't say it twice. The boys are punched in the face for saying this. Wu Fu explains that it has nothing to do with them, so they should stay out of it. The students were surprised by the arrogance of this freshman. Unexpectedly, he had become a good fighter. Wu Fu asked Ching Ting to take care of his dog. The girl was not too happy about such an errand. Chao Shun said that the protagonist should be careful. After all, they are at school. The one who makes trouble is not easy to make. He thought that Wu Fu was afraid. The protagonist suggested that Zhou Shun hide before he got angry himself. The seniors decided to fight. They took chairs and swung at Wu Fu. Their attack was successful. The protagonist warns Zhou Shun that if he doesn't want to die, he should leave now. The captain of the basketball team promises revenge. Meng Yao asks the ex what he's up to. Tian Hao thinks that Wu Fu shouldn't be arrogant about his lack of power. He repeats that his family's position in Yunhai is very high. But the protagonist doesn't want to hear this rant and brushes him off. Wu Fu accepts Meng Yao's revenge as she pleases and asks her not to bring the low life with her next time. Ching Ching is confident that Wu Fu will not be able to defeat Tian Hao's older brother, He Tian Gang. She thinks the protagonist is in big trouble. The boy said, it's not yet known who's in trouble. Tian Hao asks his father to help him kill Wu Fu. Tian Gan already knows what has happened and will return to Yunhai soon. The father wants to meet Wu Fu in person, as there is no one in Yunhai who would dare destroy his family's reputation. He asked his son to rest in peace in his hospital bed. A man enters the room and reports that Wu Fu has just reached the Qi Sphere. He promises that in a few days he will make Tian Hao's tormentor disappear. Wang Meng bursts into the protagonist's room and informs him that trouble has arrived. Zhou Xun has brought in people from the discipline committee. His uncle is the head of the discipline committee. He offers to leave and hide from them, but it is too late. Zhou Xun and his uncle are standing in the doorway. The man accused Wu Fu of conspiring with outsiders to bully his classmates by getting a dog in the dormitory. He suggested that the boy had a hobby of breaking the rules. Wang Meng told the boys, and it was actually Tian Hao who called them out. 
Jo Chun told the guy to shut up as no one was asking his opinion. The hero realizes that it's useless to talk to them as they believe that only money has power. So Wu Fu decides to beat up the uninvited guests. Jo Chun's uncle turns out to be penniless. His nephew begs Wu Fu to be honest, but the protagonist insists that they leave and offers to help. The uncle promises that he will report the situation to the school authorities and that the student will be severely punished. Leaving his nephew with Wu Fu, the uncle flees the scene. Wang Meng thinks they went too far yesterday. Three teachers came into the classroom. One of them had an announcement to make. He knows that the first year student broke the school rules, disrespected the teacher, and sent the student, He Tian Hao, to a hospital bed. Rumors are flying around the school. Some know that it was Tian Hao who called some thugs to stop Wu Fu, but it turned out that it was Wu Fu who kicked their asses. After negotiations by the school administration, it was decided to expel Wu Fu from the school so that the others would have no reason to break the rules. The classmates realized that it was Tian Hao who started the trouble, but he won't be punished because his best friend's uncle is the disciplinary headmaster. Zhou Shun is confident that he can throw the protagonist out of school in a heartbeat. The teacher asks if Wu Fu has anything to say in his defense. The boy replies that he does. Xu Qing entered the classroom, but the teacher asked her to leave. The girl said that since she opened the martial arts club, she had taken it upon herself to protect the students, and Wu Fu was one of them. She brought Dia Biao and told her that the thugs had come to beat up Wu Fu, not to massacre Tian Hao. Qing Qing told Zhou Shun that they didn't have the strength to beat Wu Fu and were now trying to get back at him, but she and her martial arts club disagree. The protagonist thinks their actions are unnecessary, but still thanks the girl for her help. Ching Ching pointed out that if she hadn't brought in Dia Biao, Wu Fu wouldn't have been able to prove his innocence. The boy said it was as simple as two fingers in a socket. Wu Fu used the transformation, but was interrupted by his teacher, who reminded him that he was from the school and that if he didn't stop, he would call the police. Zhou Shun claims that Wu Fu has no evidence to prove his innocence. He is worried about the fact that Xu Ching Ching is a treasure of the school. If her family puts pressure on her, Wu Fu won't get hurt. He turns to the protagonist and accuses him of lacking good support and wanting to show off. But Wu Fu thinks it's a misunderstanding. He didn't hear what Zhou Shun said. Wu Fu touched Zhou Shun's head with two fingers and he began to scream. His uncle couldn't understand what had happened to his nephew. His classmates don't know why the boy is screaming. Zhou Shun says Wu Fu did it to him. The disciplinarian is outraged that the student dares to hurt others in his presence. The protagonist asks if he has any proof that he was the one who hurt Zhou Shun. Kinga realized what had happened in the energy release. Zhou Shun admitted he was wrong. Wu Fu thinks that a man like Zhou Shun is not worthy of his name. Zhu Chun begs to be released. Wu Fu suggests he tell him the truth. <laughs> Zhou Shun confesses that it was He Tian Hao who told the students to obstruct Wu Fu. The disciplinary director says that the case needs to be investigated further. After all, conclusions drawn in haste could be wrong. Ching Ching hopes that the headmistress will be honest and do justice to the members of her martial arts club, which has just accepted Wu Fu. The headmaster doesn't know when the main characters had time to become friends with the Su family. He has promised the girl that the disciplinary committee will be fair and impartial. Wu Fu doesn't know when he managed to become a member of the martial arts club. Ching Ching thinks he's ungrateful because she did it so that the discipline committee would stop blaming him. She added that seven, Xu actually has a lot of influence in Yunhai, but at that point, Wu Fu walked out of the office. The girl is annoyed that her friend thinks he can solve this problem just because he has some skills. The protagonist goes to his room and finds no roommate. Wang Meng sends him a message that he is repairing shoes. Wu Fu suggests that Xiao Ha go for a walk. Ching Ching is sunbathing by the pool. She sees Xiao Ha's dog, which means Wu Fu is nearby. She wants to catch the pervert. The guy has lost sight of his dog. He's looking everywhere for her. Wu Fu dodges the knives flying in his direction. He doesn't know who attacked him. The stranger is sure that it is a bad omen for Wu Fu to meet him because now he will die anyway. The boys start to fight. The stranger is surprised to see Wu Fu blocking his knives with his bare hands. He sees that his opponent has some power. Wu Fu says that he hasn't met a worthy opponent since his rebirth and that he will get his revenge on this guy. The guy was outraged that a cultivator at the Qi Sphere level dared to insult him. The attacker thinks Wu Fu is too bold. 
the protagonist fears he will kill his opponent if he fights back. The guy thinks Wu Fu is playing tough, even in the face of death. Wu Fu has formed a sort of key to attack his opponent. This is clearly not the power of a cultivator at the level of Chi Sphere. He asked the protagonist who he is, but Wu Fu thinks the stranger is not worth knowing. Ching Ching knows that Wu Fu has the power of a mid-stage Chi Sphere, but he can fight with a higher stage Chi Sphere. This guy is not easy. The protagonist's attacker takes Xu Ching hostage, thinking she is Wu Fu's girlfriend. The protagonist explains that she is not his girlfriend, which makes Ching Ching angry. She is outraged that he has no human compassion. She's not worried because she can stand up for herself. Xu Ching expert is in the process of forming a ball. The members of her martial arts club hear an explosion in the building. They are worried that their president is inside. An outsider begs Ching Ching to spare him. All the girl has to do is wiggle her fingers to take his life. What makes her laugh is that the stranger has decided to take her hostage. The stranger uses a poisoned needle on Ching Ching. It hits her right in the neck. The girl falls down. She wolf uses sword chi in retaliation and slits the stranger's throat despite her pleas for mercy. Ching Ching cannot survive without the antidote. She whispers that she doesn't want to die. The protagonist promises that she won't die as long as he's here. He removes the needle from her neck. There is still some poison on it. The girl feels a warmth and an amalgamation of spiritual energy. Wu Fu decides to suck out the poison. At this point, members of the martial arts club enter the room. They misunderstand the situation and say that they are on their way out. I'm completely out. The girl is fine now. Ah, thanked her savior. Wu Fu thinks the attackers were after him. Saving Ching Ching was his duty and there's no need to thank him. The girl asks him to be more brave. Meng Yao is at the hospital with her boyfriend. She receives a phone call from Wu Fu. Tian Hao's father asks to be put on speakerphone. Wu Fu demands that he Tian Hao kneel down in front of him at school in three days and apologize. He adds that this is his last chance and hangs up. Ching Ching points out that the He family think they can do anything because they have He Tian Gang. Wu Fu tells her not to worry because they will stand up to him. This infuriates the girl. Tang Hao is furious that some scum has to demand an apology from him. His father reassures him that Tang Gan will be back in town in two days to kill Wu Fu. Wang Meng and Wu Fu are in their room. A karate club breaks into their room. The protagonist's roommate thought his friend would hurt them, but Wu Fu doesn't even know who they are. The boys say that their president asked them to teach him a lesson. They know that Wu Fu hurt their president's family. The president of the karate club is He Tan Hao. While their boss is resting in hospital, the guy from the club is in charge. They think that Wu Fu has no right to name their president. Tang Hao is another pile of rubbish. Wang Meng tells his friend to be careful. These people are not worthy of being called a threat. Wu Fu is too arrogant and the members of the karate club want to send him to hospital. The protagonist tells his opponents that if they want to send him to hospital, they must at least step up. The two guys attack each other. Wu Fu thinks they are acting rashly. Dracula steps in as vice president of the karate club. He is also a cultivator. Wu Fu senses that his opponent has some skills, but he still thinks he's stronger and pushes him towards the exit. Ching Ching comes by. She kicks the temporary president of the karate club in the back with her foot. The guy wasn't expecting this turn of events. She asked if the man had been given permission to bully her club members. The guy told her to stay out of it. Ching Ching assumed it was about the return of He Tang Gan. The martial arts club is always ready to fight. The karate guy said, and that garbage is garbage. He was outraged that Wu Fu was hiding behind a woman's skirt. The guy offers to fight one on one. Wang Meng asks his friend not to be a fool and not to be provoked. Ching Ching warns that Wu Fu's opponent is a level higher and asks him not to be reckless. Seeing this, the protagonist agrees to a one-on-one -on -one fight. The head of the karate club thinks he is stupid. They agree to meet at the stadium in the afternoon. The karate player's friends wish their president good luck. The protagonist tells his neighbor that he agreed because it's fun. Ching Ging knows that Ching Yun Xiao is very mean and asks Wu Fu not to go to the meeting. The girl says that if he loses, he can't dishonor the name of the martial arts club. The protagonist can't remember when he joined the club. Ching Ching explains that he is in the club because she said so. Her friend suggested that this was too childish an act. Ching Ching says that her club has always communicated in the language of power. Xiao Ha is also a member of the martial arts club now. 
Wang Meng was upset that the dog was more important than him. Tian Hao, Meng Yao, Yong Xiao, and members of the karate club gathered at the school stadium. Tian Hao gave Yun Xiao the needles left over from the last kill. They will be used to kill Wu Fu. Tian Hao has to see death with his own eyes. His friend is excited that he can easily defeat the protagonist with these needles. The company has been waiting for Wu Fu for half an hour and he is still missing. It is assumed that he has run away. The members of the karate club suggested that they call in some people to easily break the protagonist. Tang Hao explains that he wouldn't be in a wheelchair if it were of any use. Wu Fu and Ching Xin arrive at the stadium. The protagonist reminds them that he expects an apology from Tian Hao. The guy replies that he's not expecting one. Yun Xiao is outraged that just any cultivator would dare to brag to him. He forms a ball. The girl asks Wu Fu. She warns the boy that if he can't win, he must accept defeat. Wu Fu asks her to look after his dog. Yun Xiao is sure that his opponent will not get out of here alive. He attacks with poison needles. Yun Xiao knows that a bowl of qi allows him to condense formed weapons, but not completely. Wu Jiufu uses his star sword and kills his opponent. Everyone who came to watch can't believe it. And the karate club members run away. Tian Hao asks his girlfriend to get him out of here quickly, but the protagonist won't let her. Tian Hao didn't expect his opponent to be so strong. He admits his guilt and apologizes to Wu Fu. Tian Hao begs for mercy and promises not to cause any more trouble. The man says he has lost the chance for forgiveness and now it is too late to apologize. Wu Fu kills his tormentor with a poisoned needle. Tian Hao asks for an antidote, but no one has prepared one. Meng Yao says that her boyfriend never got around to dealing with her ex's death. She believes that even if Tian Hao were alive, he would be useless. The girl asked Wu Fu if he would kill her, but the man replied that she could only feel desperate if she were alive. Given Wu Fu's hatred from her past life, she will pay double. The teacher gives the student one of the three great treasures of the Zhong Yang faction. It is part sword, but it is incredibly sharp. The boy says that only through revenge can he find peace. He sees it as training in the outside world. The teacher advocates killing people eye for eye and asks him to return sooner. Meng Yao is convinced that it is better to die and end this suffering than to be humiliated. Even after death, she will not forgive her ex-boyfriend. She is stopped by Tian Gan. Since his younger brother recently died, the girl owes Wu Fu's downfall to him. The hero has taken a shower and is thinking about breaking through the Qi sphere. In his previous life, his teacher made a mixed spirit pill to help him break through to the next level. <laughs> he may not have a mixed spirit pill in his current life, but with the help of his nourishing chi sword, he has no problem breaking through. <laughs> Outside the bathroom door, the boy hears a woman's voice telling him not to lick it. He doesn't know who it is. The girl asks Xiao Ha to stop licking her. She offers Wu Fu to sit on the bed next to her. But it was already the protagonist's bed. The girl is annoyed because she already took the initiative to find him. She asks for a little more enthusiasm. Wu Fu doesn't know what she wants from him. The girl wants to test his strength, but he doesn't react. The protagonist asks him to stop. The girl notices that Wu Fu's swords are completely silent. She couldn't have noticed them even though the boy had used them at the very beginning. Wu Fu had reached the peak of his breakthrough. The use of the chi ball has pushed him to the very edge. It looks like the breakthrough has already happened. The girl thinks that the dormitories are too low in spiritual energy. It's not the best place for a breakthrough. Wu Fu is sure that the guy wouldn't have had to break through in the dormitories if her inspection hadn't ruined his original plan. She's the student council representative. If the student makes a fuss in the dormitory, she is forced to come and find out everything. The girl asks the protagonist if he has prepared the pills. You're surprised that he hasn't prepared anything for such an important case. Wu Fu thinks he doesn't need to. He absorbs all spiritual energy within a 10 mile radius. She's sure that cultivators at the level of the Qi sphere can't do that. Wu Fu breaks through. Wu Fu and Big Sister Shu are followed by other students through the peephole. Wang Meng was among them. Suddenly, the doors opened and Wu Fu saw what was behind them. Wang Meng praised his friend for his good work. She asked him to bring her some clothes. At the Shu family home, everyone was waiting for Wu Fu, but he was already late. Uncle Ching Ching thought the boy was arrogant, even though he is only at the stage of forming a key ball. 
but the girl teased her uncle, saying that her friend was stronger than him. The grandfather reminded her that the boy had saved Ching Ching's life twice and they would wait for him all day. Meanwhile, Wu Fu was walking towards him through the forest. Xiao Ha was with him. He knows that two guys are following him. He doesn't understand why they haven't shown themselves yet. The two guys told the protagonist that since he was only at the Chi Sphere stage, it would be more logical to go to a crowded place to ask for help. However, he led them into the forest. The boy said that he was already in the Myromorphosis stage. They had been sent by He Tian Gan to avenge the death of his younger brother. He only asked them to investigate, but it would be better if they brought him Wu Fu's head. Ching Ching finds it very strange that the friend has still not come. Xiao Ha's dog bursts into the house. The girl asked the dog where its master was. Xiao Ha grabbed her by the sleeve and pulled her towards his master. He clearly wanted the girl to follow him. It looked like Wu Fu was in trouble. At that time, the boy was fighting with two fighters in the forest. The boys are surprised that Fu Wu has made it to the metamorphosis stage. His opponents don't know much about him yet. Ching Ching is sure that her friend is in danger because he is fighting two metamorphosis stage cultivators. She wants to help, but Grandpa stops her because Wu Fu has broken through the Chi Sphere stage. Grandpa can feel the powerful energy from Wu Fu's broken sword. Above the protagonist's head is a real sword hilt. It looks like the guy is looking down again. Another batch of rubbish has been sent to him. The attacker's information was wrong. Wu Fu's transformation object looks a bit like a faction treasure. The protagonist doesn't let his opponent go anywhere. He kills him with one blow. Xiao Ha runs to his master. Ching Ching decides to shame the third brother, who boasts that he can defeat ten of them. But he has no shame at all, as he notices that the moon is round today. Xiao Ha has eaten the dead man's spirit stone. The stone has become a snack containing a lot of energy. The boy is happy that his dog has eaten the stone. This caused Xiao Ha's teeth to change. They became sharper. A black car pulled up in front of the Shu family's house. Today, the two boys were supposed to find out Wu Fu's abilities and report back, but it had already taken too long. He's worried. Three men get out of the car. They shout and tell Wu Fu to get out because he has killed people. The boy did not expect to find Master Su Jia in Tafnu Haiyan. Tian Gan hopes that his men killed Wu Fu, even though he has some skills. Meng Yao decides it's safe to assume her ex-boyfriend is dead. The protagonist approaches and asks if it is him they are looking for. Tian Gan's friends have a lot of power. Wu Fu is no enemy to them. Tian Gan believes that Xu's family helped Wu Fu eliminate his men. The man blames the family. They beat and killed Zhong Yan's disciples. But it was Wu Fu who did the killing and the Xu family had nothing to do with it. Su Jia thinks such statements are insolent. Tian Gan doesn't believe it. He tells the boy to watch his words. His family has owned the sea for many years. Someone should teach Tian Gan some manners. Xu's family will not allow outsiders to invade their land and kill innocent people. Wu Fu appreciates their kindness, but this time he wants to take matters into his own hands. He throws the bodies of the two murdered men at Tian Gang, which makes him very angry. The protagonist says that if Tian Gang wants revenge, he should first make sure that he has enough strength. Master Su Jia sees Wu Fu's powerful sword. The strength of the Shu family cannot be underestimated as Su Wei is half a master. In just a few days, the protagonist has reached this position. Tian Gan decides to retreat today. Tian Gan promises to kill Wu Fu. Meng Yao can't even imagine what kind of skills her ex has that the Xu family has stood up to him. Tian Gan suggests waiting for him to come out to finish him off. Ching Ching's brother walks around the protagonist and tries to establish a relationship with him. He asks Wu Fu for a girlfriend. He can't see into Wu Fu's power. He asks when the guy's master will return. The protagonist replies that he has gone on a journey to the Sea of Clouds. The man thought he was a simple young man and didn't expect such strong support. He wants to take this relationship to the next level. Maybe the old man will reward him for his help. Grandpa has heard that Ching Ching and Wu Fu go to the same school. Wang Meng was fast asleep and dreaming. Suddenly, Tia Gan and his friends enter his room. They want to take revenge on Wu Fu for Tian Hao's death. After meeting the Shu family, the protagonists have to go back to school. 
Ching Ching's father wants to give him a gift for saving his daughter, namely divine spirit pills. These pills are useful in the mystic stage. The boy thinks it is too early to give them to Wu Fu, but the grandfather will not ask him what to do or how to thank him for saving his only granddaughter. These pills are very expensive. Ching Ching says that they are not giving him this gift so that he can use it immediately. Wu Fu has development methods. The boy says there is no need for them. He asks Ching Ching's father to help him find his sword parts. The girl thinks that the divine spirit pills are much stronger than the broken sword. The sword's power proves otherwise. Master Sujia believes that the power of this sword is comparable to the artifacts used by cultivators in the mystic stage. Wu Fu shows no sign of fear in his encounter with He Tian Gai. The man asked if the sword was the treasure of the protagonist's master. The boy explained that it was not of this world. The grandfather would see what could be done. Wu Fu thanked the Shu family and left. At the bus stop, Zhu Shun met three boys from another university. They were members of the basketball club that had beaten Yunhai University's basketball club. If they won this time, Zhou Shun should kneel down to greet them. Zhou Shun decides to tell them that they've got some very strong primaries, alluding to Wu Fu passing by. But the boys think that Yunhai University is no match for them. Zhou Xiong begs Wu Fu to save him. He gets punched in the face. He keeps asking the protagonist for help and doesn't understand why he doesn't want to fight. The guys think that all Yunhai students are nothing and that during the cultivator exchange, Yunhai University is your defeat. Now they ask Wu Fu to show them the way, but because of their insults, the guy decides to punish them. He asks them to speak politely and not to resort to violence. The protagonist's opponent turns out to be the heir of the elder family, the fierce tiger fist. His friends ask him to be discreet and not to kill Wu Fu. The protagonists tell him that they are not rivals and that the boy should leave while he still has the chance. The students didn't think that Yunhai University had produced any nobodies with powers. Tiger Fist still wouldn't give up. He promised to punish Wu Fu for playing tough in front of him. The president of the school board arrived on the scene. She was shocked that Wu Fu could defeat the toughest opponent from Shur College. The students thought that the protagonist was from the school board, but he was not. The boy revealed that he was a member of a martial arts club. Student council members are always the strongest students in the school and the girl had never heard of a martial arts club. She told the president of the Yunhai school board that her school was challenging them. They were hoping that Wu Fu would participate in a cultivator exchange. The guy didn't really want to, but the girl said they'd cleaned up the mess left by He Tian Gai. Attending is just a small price to pay for helping out. Now Wu Fu wonders why no one was bullying him at school. The girl said they had to meet in the student council meeting room. She hadn't expected the first year to be so strong. He had only broken through a few days ago, but he had already won the fist of the Varepo Tiger of Shu College, which had been at this stage of development for a long time. Yunhai University has a chance to win this time, as they have never beaten Shai College in the exchange program. They have a stage expert. It's less embarrassing for them to lose. A member of the college's student council is against the first year entering the competition. The girl says that the light members are strong students from Yunhai and if they lose again, she won't mind expelling them all. The girl reminds the protagonist that the exchange program starts at noon and asks him not to be late. She reveals that there are much stronger opponents in the college than Fist of the Tiger and asks that they be judged on their merits. A member of the student council asks Wu Fu not to get cocky and insults him. He is beaten for his trouble President Liu is hopeful that Yunhai University will win this time. Wu Fu entered the room and saw a neighbor throwing rubbish around. He immediately realized that He Tian Gan had come. Wang Meng does not want his neighbor to intercede on his behalf because his tormentor is very strong. Wu Fu promises that Tian Gan will personally apologize to his neighbor. Today is the start of the cultivator exchange competition. The students hope to win this time. They think it is very risky to use the first year to fight their toughest opponent. President Liu is confident that the candidate is very strong this time. One member of the student council allows the first honcho to represent their college, but another suggests that he beat all the opponents from Shea College on his own. This guy decides to pick a fight with Wu Fu in order to prevent him from participating in the exchange program. The protagonist is not very eager to take part in the competition. He is forced to do so by the president of the student council. Guy attacks the first race but gets a good kick out of it. 
Now he doubts that it's the newcomer because Wu Fu is very strong. Ching Ching approaches the group of competitors. She thought the competition had already started. She is a cultivator in the final stage of orb formation. Hei Tian Gan approaches the group of students. He is a cultivator at the mystic level. He didn't expect to meet Wu Fu here. Wang Meng comes between them. Who doesn't want his friend to stand up for him, as competition is more important now? The protagonist says that it doesn't matter if Tian Gang would have come here or not, the result is the same. The guy will win, and he will. Wang Meng wanted to kiss him for saying that. Wu Fu hit his friend because of his reflexes. Wu Fu wants to avenge his friend. But what should Tian Gang do if his brother is killed? He wants Wu Fu to pay with his life. The protagonist believes that Tian Hao deserved to die, and when his older brother wants revenge, he is always ready. It wasn't Wang Meng who killed his brother, it was Wu Fu. Tian Gan doesn't think a weakling like Wang Meng deserves his apology. He asks the fat man if he dares to accept his apology. Tian Gan got hold of the great treasure of the Zhong Yan faction. He thought he could scare Wu Fu with it. The hero sensed this fragment during his first encounter with Tian Gan. The treasure becomes more aggressive. It is very difficult to control. The fragment escapes from He Tian Gan's hands and flies straight to Wu Fu's sword. It's his piece. The boys continue to fight, but are stopped by President Li. Wu Fu thinks he must be patient and wait for the right moment to exact his revenge. Tian Gang is interested in the sword that can consume one of the three great treasures of the Zhong Yan faction. He wants to get his hands on it. The students of Sher College are surprised by the presence of such strong opponents at Yunhai University. They are especially worried about He Tian Gan, who reached the Qi realm a year ago. This year, it will be more difficult to deal with Yunhai University. Xiao Ha digs something into the ground, but Wang Meng stops him. President Lu scolds Wu Fu for just reaching the sphere formation stage and already trying to get into a showdown with He Tian Gan, who has been at this stage for a while. Besides, the boys have yet to enter the competition. So Tian Gan thinks the treasure is his and wants it back. But Wu Fu did nothing. The shard itself returned to its original owner. These shards have belonged to the Yanzhong faction for three years. Tian Gan is sure that this is just an excuse. He starts to attack Wu Fu, but stumbles and falls. The students around him laugh. Tian Gan orders Wang Men to leave if he doesn't want to die. Wu Fu assures Tian Gang that it is Tian Gang who must leave. If he gets all the pieces of the orb, he will be even stronger. He feels it is his duty to take the sword from the protagonist. President Lu asks them to put aside their grudges and stop fighting. She insists that Shay's college people should not be allowed to make fun of them, as internal friction cannot be more important than the exchange competition. The students were not expecting an internal dispute at the university. They think that He Tian Gan is not that powerful. They don't understand who Wu Fu is and why he's so powerful. He's just a beginner. It seems to them that the guy hasn't even used his full strength yet. During a fight between the protagonist and Tian Gan, the latter manages to knock the sword out of Wu Fu's hands. It now belongs to him. The guy thinks the protagonist is nothing without the sword. The sword chi is in He Tian Gan's hands. But after a few seconds, it went into Wu Fu's hands of its own accord because it had been stored in his body all along and no one would be able to take it away. The students at Shu College did not believe it was a primitive. The girl said that Wu Fu had been beaten up by He Tiangan and sent to hospital two months ago because of problems in his personal life. If Tian Hao is He Tiangan's brother, then Wu Fu must be an ordinary man. It turns out that the protagonist has become so strong in two months or has always hidden his strength. The protagonist has a secret. Wu Fu uses the star sword technique. The students standing next to him seem to think that he has just broken through to the sphere formation stage. They don't understand how this guy was able to defeat the mystic stage cultivator so easily. Tian Gan admitted that his opponent was stronger. It seems to him that Wu Fu is using a secret technique. He will never forget his injustice and will surely take revenge. Wang Meng is thrilled to see his friend defeat Tian Gang. The student thinks that Wu Fu relies too much on his sword. The boy tells him that there will always be fights during the cultivation exchanges. Wu Fu will fight in place of He Tian Gan, who has just escaped. The college doesn't think the protagonist is invulnerable, as he has only recently reached the sphere formation stage. 
they believe that even with this sword, he won't be able to defeat their boss. Wu Fu does not want to waste his time talking and suggests that they all attack together. The captain of the college team thinks he can make the protagonist regret his words. He gives him one last chance to apologize. Wu Fu must not think that he can win just because he has a sword. President Liu says that if he Tian Gan had won, they would have had a 60% chance of winning, but now, if Wu Fu loses, she will devour him. Ching Ching thinks it's wrong to do this in front of her opponents. The girl wants to give a proper welcome to a bunch of thugs who don't know when to stop. The boy thinks that Ching Ching is jealous of President Liu. The girl wants to fight this student, but in the process of attacking. She realizes that his defenses are too strong and it is too late to dodge. She is defended by Wu Fu because he is his opponent, the girl Anya. Ching Ching asks his rescuer to be more careful. The boy is confident that no one can penetrate his family's divine protection technique, especially Wu Fu with a toy knife. He dreams of beating up the protagonist. Wu Fu stands motionless. The student council president has already admitted defeat and thinks that the university will lose again this year. The divine defense technique has been broken. There is nothing that can block Wu Fu's sword. No matter where it is, past, present or future, the students of Shi School have realized that they have lost. They could concede defeat, but they would have to give Wu Fu the soul stone. He explained that his dog loved them very much. Xiao Ha ran to get some treats. The boy discovered the presence of the treasure in Tianfu Hao Yuan. The master asked him to find the owner of the divine weapon and give him the piece. The boy promised to do so, but in reality, he thought only he was worthy to use the divine weapon. The master told him that his time in this world was like glass. If he never reaches the Tao realm, he will die. Meng Yao does not understand how Wu Fu has become so strong. He tells her that the girl will choose death over life. Tian Gang tells her to be quiet. Wu Fu is so easy for me. His strength is equal to Tian Gang's. Then he uses a divine weapon. The boy won't leave him alone. He wants to be content with watching Wu Fu die in front of him. The man has no idea how the pass works. He decides to ask the guard. To get into Wu Fu's private room, he has to show his invitation card. Xiao Ha recently tore up this card. Unfortunately, the guards won't accept it. Joshin happens to be nearby. He thinks Wu Fu is unworthy of coming to such a place. He doesn't believe that the dog tore up the pass. Wu Fu can only pass if he has an intact map. The protagonist wants Joshin to help him, but he refuses. He doesn't want Wu Fu to touch him, especially in public. Wu Fu asks him to give him the card. The girl accompanying Joshun doesn't think he can communicate with trash like Wu Fu. She sees a necklace she likes and asks Joshun to buy it for her. Joshun gives her his passport and asks Wu Fu to accept it. The hero thanks him. The boy thinks that Wu Fu has become even stronger than before. Wu Fu has arrived for the auction. The negotiated swords would be auctioned off today. Ching Ching's father had invited him here so that the boy could see if the blade was here. The man asked to leave the rivalry problem to the Su family. They would do their best. Wu Fu was very grateful for his help. If it turns out to be a sword fragment, the man will teach the Su family some tricks. The man thinks that Wu Fu does not know how much the lot is worth. The man tells him to keep quiet. Wu Fu has seen that Su's father has been stuck in the Yangsheng area for a long time. These holds are enough to make him come back. The man is surprised that Wu Fu knows about his father's condition. The auction begins. The protagonist is very interested in the event. The first lot is a dazzling ghost. The starting price is half a million. Shou Ha barks and Mr. Xu decides to buy it for her. Ching Ching doesn't think her family needs spirits right now. Even if this spirit is valuable, it is useless to her. Her father says he will buy whatever the dog Wu Fu wants. The girl thinks that her father has changed. The auction includes a sparkling Trutovic for 5 million, a Fishik for 3 million, and a Pudashi Lingxi for 2 million. It's almost over. I wonder what the last lot will be. It doesn't matter to the man. He can't afford it anyway. The last lot will be the most expensive one. It's a fragment of the Divine Sword. Just the one Wu Fu is looking for. Another man has appeared who has been searching for the treasure for nine years. He is asking someone here to help him buy it. It's very difficult to get someone to pay for you at an auction. The guy didn't think he'd meet anyone more insolent than Wu Fu. One of the auction guests thinks the guy is confused. The unknown man is putting a lot of pressure on those present. 
he wants to make someone pay in exchange for any help. It turns out that there is a man in the ashes who is willing to buy the treasure for 10 million. The man promises to grant any wish later. The man thought that his power deserved the treasure and decided to help him. Wu Fu and the Su family felt the immense power. Ching Ching's father doesn't know who the mysterious man is. The protagonist says that it doesn't matter because the Su family can't handle him. Wu Fu is sure that the mystery man will definitely give him the fragment. Mr. Su asks if he knows Wu Fu. The man replied that he didn't, but he knows the stranger himself. The mysterious buyer who helped an unknown man acquire a fragment of the divine sword turns out to be He Tian Gan. He's content to be promised help when he needs it. He wants to use this opportunity to fight Wu Fu. Someone knocks on Tang Gan's door. It's his friend who also wants to help him get rid of his enemy. Tang Gan is in no hurry. He wants to concentrate on getting the sword first and then torturing Wu Fu. Meng Yao thinks that her ex will die this time. Due to his consumption of spirit stones, Xiao Ha's teeth are developing well. The president of the student council comes into the main character's room. She also notices that the puppy has grown. Wu Fu asks her to tell her what's wrong with him. The girl says that she just can't look at him because he's always alone. Wu Fu throws her on the bed, snuggles up to her and asks her not to play with fire if she's not ready to sit down. He whispers in her ear that it could be dangerous. The girl pushes him away and explains that she's looking for him to play for Yunhai University. Wu Fu is not interested. Approval is not important to her as her rivals are very strong. It looks like the university will never get good marks this time. There are only 10 contestants in this competition. The girl can ask someone else. This competition will be much more difficult. Wu Fu has asked to record it, but he has to do something first. The girl covered her face and eyes with her hands in embarrassment. Despite the ease of the task, Wu Fu cannot stay in uniform, so he changes clothes. First, he needs to move to the stage of strengthening the body. The head of the student council is sure that it will not be easy. The guy, on the contrary, thinks that it is quite quick and understandable. President Lu created an energy sphere around herself. Wu Fu is worth defending. Right now, he's focused as much as possible on breaking through. It seems he succeeded. The student council president plans to go outside and get some fresh air. Once upon a time, she spent a lot of effort, money and time to break through the sphere. And for the Wu, as it seems to her, it happened by accident. Wang Meng stands outside the door of the room and tries to understand what is going on inside. Suddenly, the door opened and President Lu saw the guy. The girl didn't say anything. It looks like she's cultivating. Wang Meng finds it cruel to leave Xiao Ha alone for a long time. Most likely the dog will be bored. Seeing the owner, he barked happily. Wang Meng turned around and saw his friend undressed. Looks like he's out of time. It's his birthday today. The guy offers a drink in honor of it. Wu Fu agrees without any problem. Wang Meng left to look for a suitable place for a feast. A friend will join him later. Tian Gan hired an informant to follow the guys. I think he sent a message saying they're in the liquor store right now. It's in honor of Wang Meng's birthday celebration. Meng Yao suggested ruining the party. Need to arrange hotel rooms. This will be the best moment to kill Wu Fu. The guy asks the teacher to take the medicine. It needs to be done slower because the old man is coughing. He almost does not feel his body, but the divine warrior will be able to help him. If the student can find him, he will save the teacher. The boy bowed to the old man. He goes looking for a way to help. His gaze is very suspicious. Perhaps he is hiding something. Wu Fu came to the birthday cafe with his pet. Xiao Ha holds an object in his teeth. It seems he also brought a gift for Wang Meng. The guy took it in his hands. It looked like a yellow pebble. President Liu had joined them. The company was alerted by something outside the window. It looks like a portal to the desert has opened before them. You can see the sand dunes, and you can feel the sand under your feet. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a huge snake appeared, several times the size of the guys. She comes close to bite. Her open mouth is sent to Wu Fu. You can't just walk away from a magic array. Wang Meng is scared. Xiao Ha created an energy sphere around him. He turned into a huge spirit animal and attacked the snake. This greatly surprised the head of the student council. The dog managed to defeat the reptile and protect his master. It's all because of the spirit stones he likes to feast on. In the same building, a couple of floors above is Li Meng Yao with accomplices. 
kill the guy. Now they were prevented by the dog, which is constantly next to Wu Fu. But this is not scary because he, along with his friends, are in the illusion of Comrade Miss Lee, who can easily get rid of him. After the victory of Xiao Ha, they instantly found themselves at the reservoir, in the middle of which stood a served table and chairs. They are still in the room. There is a magical array that looks like a spiritual wall. If you find something that really exists, you can get out of it. There's something real around, but they don't see it. Wu Fu slammed his fist on the table and it shattered into pieces. In the real world, the ceiling in Li Meng Yao's room cracked and then pieces of the table fell down. Nearby, a window cracked and debris fell to the floor. The guys fell to the floor below through a hole in the floor. Now Bu Cho Lu was convinced that they really were at the hotel. Wu Fu saw his ex-girlfriend in front of him. Looks like she orchestrated the tricks. Meng Yao is sure that this time he will die. Sounds pretty intriguing. A man approached the main character. He assures that this time, the guy can't just walk away. He's probably strong. Wu Fu gave his pet to a friend and asked him to leave. Even if the students broke the formation, it wouldn't help them to escape. But the main character is sure of the opposite. His opponent created a miserable magic formation and disgraced himself in front of him. Wu Fu pulled out his sword and rose into the air. This seems to have alerted his enemy. The strength of the guy's magic formation is stronger than his. With the help of telepathy, Wu Fu makes him bow. Heavy air all around. Being at the peak of the level of the guru, the guy cannot even raise his hand. Things are not going well. Through the textures, a voice was heard that shames the protagonist for oppressing the weak. Wu Fu heard him. A hand penetrated through the magical information. She grabbed the guy and pulled him into the real world. It looks like the stranger is the master's apprentice. Wu Fu recognized him. In a past life, this guy sought to destroy the poison master. The protagonist is going to expose his hypocritical mask in front of everyone. The hooded guy offered to go with him. President Liu tries to stop his friend, but he assures him that everything is fine and that he will be back soon. The stranger suggested that he give up the strong spirit. The girl does not quite understand what this could mean. Once upon a time in a past life, this guy killed his master, followed by 300 years. All because of the cauldron the old man gave to the stranger. On his part, this is a heartless act. The student asked not to blame him for the fact that everything ended like this. Wu Fu assures that this will not happen again. They came to the master. The main character turned out to be the guy with whom the old man so wanted to see. The man knows that the young man has incredible abilities and he just needs help. He feels that death is near, but still wants to break through to the next layer. The master is in the mortal world and therefore it is almost impossible for him to break through. It seems that it is still early. Perhaps there is another way out? His student clearly does not like the presence of a rogue. He called the guy arrogant bastards, but the teacher shut his mouth. Wu Fu smelled a strong scent of herbs in the room. Master's body already quite weak, all because of age. The old man noticed that the guest could see right through him. He seems to know him. Wu Fu will be able to help him, but there are conditions. The student considers it unacceptable to set conditions for the master. Perhaps their guest noticed that he switched herbs. Wu Fu used a special technique to help the old man, but the student thought he was harming the master. It's not true, but the guy still plans to destroy Wu Fu to avoid problems in the future. The main characters used a technique unknown to the master, helped restore half of Meridian. The young man is very talented. Wu Fu has sensed a sword shard nearby and wants to take it away. This will be the payment for helping a man. Now the student, Li Ju, must give the shard to the owner of the star sword. He obeyed, and Wu Fu's sword acquired another missing piece. This is an unusual thing. You need to be careful with it. The main character will listen to his advice. After some time, Li Ju and acquaintance Meng Yao met at the hotel. The guy put a flask with unknown contents on the table. His acquaintance must do everything to destroy Wu Fu before tomorrow. He will destroy anyone who gets in his way. So family home, the sound of water comes from the room. It's Ching Ching taking a shower. The girl sings while bathing. She heard footsteps from the hallway and thought someone was following her. It could be Wu Fu. Ching Ching took a towel to dry off. Three men stand at the bathroom door. They honestly admitted that they came to kill Wu Fu and did not expect to see a naked girl. She advises to leave the house, but the man does not intend not to leave. 
they are looking for Wu Fu, who has not yet arrived. One mister intends to play with Ching Ching before the guy arrives. He plans to attack the girl, but does not yet know that he attacked the wrong one. Ching Ching is also a cultivator. But where does a girl get such strength? The concentration of men was hampered by her half-naked appearance. She was able to kill the man with a knee to the face. The guy didn't think there were people like Wu Fu, but he doesn't think the girl is stronger. Wu Fu finally arrived. He caught him off guard by quietly approaching from behind. From fright, the guy huddled in a corner. It turned out that the one they were looking for was in the house all the time. After analyzing, the guy concluded that Wu Fu had an average stage of body transformations. Today, he came to kill the main character, and he is sure of his victory. Ching Ching noticed something strange under her friend's feet. This is a magic array. It gradually envelops Wu Fu's legs. Caught in the illusion, the protagonist saw that his body was wrapped in chains. It turned out that before he jumped out of fright, the guy managed to establish magical information. It doesn't matter, because Wu Fu has the Star Sword, which cut all the chains in one fell swoop. Once again in reality, the main character found himself in the bathroom and Ching Ching was standing next to him. His opponent had just jumped out of the window. He stepped back to a safe distance and paused in thought. It was news to him that Wu Fu could summon a sword. Hearing this, Root decided to fight without him. Overjoyed, his opponent believed that he could quickly defeat Wu Fu and rushed to the attack. Despite the lack of a sword, the main characters perfectly possess martial techniques. He deftly dodges the blows of the enemy, which angers him even more. The guy noticed a black substance under his feet. These tricks belong to his opponent. The liquid began to suck him in, and the enemy rejoiced that this time he could not dodge. But his expectations were not fulfilled. Wu Fu stopped the guy with a powerful punch. Then he pulled off his cloak and invited the opponent to finish the duel. The guy is surprised by his strength. He had never encountered anyone like him before. But he doesn't need to know who Wu Fu is. The main hero used a secret technique and destroyed the enemy with one blow. Qin Xin noticed that her friend had become even stronger. Only points remained from his opponent. The guy asks the girl to deal with the remaining bodies. The girl will fulfill his request. After all, if the corpses were found in his house by other people, then suddenly Ching Ching's towel came undone. In shock, she tried to quickly lift him up and cover her nakedness. The girl was afraid that Wu Fu saw her naked, but he assures that he did not look. Li Ju is watching them from the roof of the house. If a girl sees that he is spying on her, she promises to castrate her. She slammed the door loudly and you entered your room. Luke remained outside. Ching Ching is still embarrassed. Having changed into a home uniform, she went out to the guy. Xiao Ha created an energy sphere around him at the sight of the girl. It's probably out of joy. She didn't expect to see it. Looks like the dog will break through the sphere soon. He ate a lot of spiritual stones. Ching Ching would never have thought that a dog could cultivate. Xiao Hash released his long claws and began tearing the parquet boards. Again, the house will be destroyed. The girl is sure. What kind of owner is such a dog? Two guards entered. In their hands, they hold the corpse of a guy. They should give it to the head of the family. But Wu Fu assures that this is not necessary because he knows who is behind this. Ching Ching was surprised. The main characters are looking up. The girl ran out into the yard and looked up at the roof. The guy is already gone. She doesn't know how long he was there. Wu Fu is convinced that Diju has been following them all this time. Wu Fu asks the bodyguards to carry the body and follow them. They plan to visit Tiangan's family. The man reminds that Ching Ching needs to ask the head of the family what to do next, but the girl assures that there is no need to worry because no one will touch her with Wu Fu. The car is moving towards the main character's enemy. The guard asks his colleague to warn the master that Wu Fu and Miss Chu are heading towards Tian Gan. At the entrance to the estate, asks about the purpose of the visit. He didn't seem to notice Wu Fu. The Zhu family's driver doesn't know what to say. First, Xiao Ha ran out of the car, and then his master got out. At this moment, the guards of Hei Tian Gan came to their senses and finally realized who was in front of them. The man ordered to seize the guest. Bodyguard Ching Ching wanted to get out of the car and help the guy, but the girl stopped him. It is not necessary. Better to stay inside and just watch. Yi Xiao Ha pounced on the huge guard. Someone informed He Tian Gan that Wu Fu had come. He does not understand what happened because he did not touch anyone. Li Meng Yao is scared. 
In the morning, the guy hired a dozen bodyguards. Their goal is to occupy Wu Fu and reduce his spiritual power. And then Tian Gan will not miss the opportunity to get rid of his brother's killer. The men ask the master for protection. They were beaten by a small dog. But he doesn't intend to waste his spiritual power. The guy pushes the bodyguard away with his foot, calling him rubbish. Tian Gamut with Wu Fu. He does not understand what the problem is and why the guy came to his house. But in response, the Hu family bodyguards carried out the body of the young man and placed it at his feet. Li Mong Yao recognized him. This is Zhou Tongtian. Tian Gan assures that there was a misunderstanding and this is not his person. Wu Fu is sure that the guy used Zhou Tongtian to lure someone in, namely Li Zhu. A blue beam of light shone on a mountain near the city. He is aiming for the sky. It was in a cave from crystal clear water that a naked girl appeared. Hu Tiangan and Li Mengyao look after the departing car. Next time, the guy should make sure Wu Fu dies. The girl worries that her ex can even kill Ganga, but with the innate power of Xiong Queen Ai, he cannot be compared. Someone is watching the couple from a tree branch. Tian Gan felt it. It was Li Zhu, who descended closer to them. The landlord greeted him. It turns out that the guest came for Wu Fu, who helped his master solve the problem. Tian Gan was surprised. He thought that the guy had come to reconcile him with Wu Fu, and decided to immediately warn him that this was impossible. Li Zhu demonstrated the strength of his sword. He stuck it into the ground, and a crack formed. The bodyguards immediately rushed to protect their master. Sword made from black iron. Tian Gan stepped closer. Such a weapon can defeat a cultivator two stages higher. It's hard to believe, but it seems Li Zhu gives it to Tian Gan Yi and asks him to avenge Tian Hao's death. Now the guy is sure that with the help of such a sword, he can kill Wu Fu. The preliminary match between campuses will start soon. The main character needs to complete one thing. He asks Ching Ching to take Xiao Ha with him for a while. Wu Fu seems to be disturbed by the flashes of light on the side of the mountain that is visible from the school. The guy went to the forest. He noticed that the aura around him suddenly grew. In the middle of the thicket of the forest, Wu Fu discovered the blue lake. This is exactly what he was looking for. Behind him, the boy heard footsteps approaching and then the swing of a sword. He barely managed to dodge the attack. But who is attacking him? Wu Fu dodged several times and then concentrated his strength and blocked the blow. A force wave of opponents was thrown in different directions. The attack has stopped. His feet touched the ground and the boy stopped. When the smoke cleared, Wu Fu saw a dark-haired girl in front of him. She levitates in the air. In her hand is a sword. It seems that the stranger did not expect to meet a person capable of repelling her attack. Rest assured that this is a misunderstanding. Despite the fact that he is talented and his fighting skills are similar to those of a fencer, the girl plans to gouge out his eye. Wu Fu managed to dodge the blade of her sword. The stranger talks a lot during the fight. She does not believe that this is a simple misunderstanding. Suddenly, a memory dawned on her, Zhen Qi. As he left, Wu Fu once again reminded him that he had not seen anything. The girl believes that it is better for him not to catch her eye anymore. Xiao Ha sleepily yawns on the bench. The team is assembled, but Wu Fu hasn't arrived yet. Considering that he fights with senior students, the championship was only forgotten for him. Entering the room, the main characters kicked the guy, which was unflattering about him. On the clock exactly 15 ohm, he was not late. College competitions officially begin. Eight representatives from each educational institution. In the section, there are only two places for beginners. Cadets must take places and compete on behalf of their college. Wu Fu noticed. He was the first to climb into the ring and invited those present to fight him. But there were no volunteers because there are rumors about the madness of the protagonist. Laughter erupted from the crowd. This is Wu Fu's first opponent. He is also a freshman. His name is Fan Kong. The guy is also a freshman and broke through to the highest layer. He is considered a true master. Fan Kong has heard a lot about Wu Fu and is very happy to meet in person. The main character reciprocated. He beckoned his opponent closer with his finger. Fan Kong shone with purple light and turned into a whirlwind. He decided to attack first the boy made a concentrated dash towards Wu Fu. The main character noticed something. 
from Fan Kun's hands, in addition to energy, a cloud of unknown substance flew towards him. The audience thinks the hit was good. Wu Fu and his aura were unaffected. Fan Kun can't believe his eyes. His plan didn't work. Now it was Wu Fu's turn to strike. His opponent tried to run away, but the guy stopped him by stepping on his foot. Using a secret technique, he reached out with his hand to his body, and in an instant, forced Fan Kong to piss himself. This time, the main character releases his opponent, but if he uses poison again during the competition, Wu Fu will kill him too. Fan Kun, wearing a torn t-shirt and wet pants, sat down in the corner of the ring. Fan Kun lost. Wu Fu is waiting for the next caller, but no one is willing. The coach said through his teeth that in this case, he has a place in the team. The doors of the hall swung open. A guy walked in that the man didn't expect to see. He came to watch the freshman fight. The guy, along with the president, will represent the third course. His name is Hua Feng. The athlete did not appear at training for six months. He probably got a lot stronger. The guy came close to the ring and his and Wu Fu's eyes were fixed on each other. Hua Feng did not come alone, but with friends. One of them is holding a baseball bat. He wants to teach the freshmen some manners. The coach is dissatisfied with this behavior of his ward. The company pounced on Wu Fu. The first one was the guy with the bat. He deservedly received a punch in the jaw. Hua Feng was behind the main character. He believes in his superior speed as he is a simple rookie. The guy was out of sight. The Hua family is stronger with each new generation. She deserves her reputation. The third year student thinks the rookie has skills, but bad reactions. He rushes around Wu Fu, claiming that he could have killed him 10 times already. This made the main character laugh. Ha Feng plans to attack the enemy, but suddenly notices that he has disappeared. He is confused. Where did Wu Fu go? But it turned out that the guy was behind him. The coach admitted that the first year was faster than Hua Feng. The guy noticed the enemy behind him and tried to run away, but it was too late. With his efforts, he formed a cloud of smoke around Wu Fu. It's not a problem for him. The guy just smirked. Since Hua Feng is here, he shouldn't leave too soon. Finally, he realized that the beginner was very fast. Wu Fu used a fire technique and his opponent's hands smoked slightly from the burn. The guy is shocked by the freshman's strength. Looks like this kid is in the transformation realm. Wu Fu threw Hua Feng out of the ring, he hit the wall and blood came out of his mouth. The other contestants concluded that Wu Fu was in the realm of transformation. And it is true. His cultivation can surpass everyone present. In the student council office, President Liu announced the list of all the contestants. Among them, Hua Feng is a third year student, He Tianyi, Xu Qing in their second year, Wu Fu and Feng Sun in their first year. The girl warns the newcomer that he should be more careful as he has contacted Hua Feng and He Tian. But the main character is sure that they are not his opponents. Ba Chou Lu heard that the third year was about to break through the mystic realm. Wu Fu has the star sword and is therefore not afraid of anyone. In any case, you need to be careful. Li Ju asks the master to take the medicine he has prepared. The man trained for several days and the body improved significantly and the strength was restored to a sufficient level. The student is sure that the reason for this is the strength of the teacher. The master asks Li Zhong to look for Wu Fu because he wants to thank him for his help. A pungent smell comes from the bathroom in Hua Feng's apartment. The guy is sitting in a bathtub filled to the brim with red liquid. Suddenly, He Tiangan, Li Meng Yao, and another guy rushed in. Hua Feng is very angry with them. He almost broke through to the mystic realm. He is curious what Wu Fu is doing to defeat him. Everyone was at the meeting. You can start. President Lu is wondering if anyone has a claim on the list. He Tian, Feng Kun, Hua Feng, and Wu Fu remained silent in response. No objections. The cabinet door swung open. The meeting participants stared at the teacher and the young guy. His name is Xiao Yao. He is in his fourth year of study. The guy will be fully responsible for this competition. President Liu softly whispered to Wu Fu that Xiao Yao most likely joined in order to prevent him from participating in the competition. He is the heir of the Xiao family, the most promising graduate of their college. He has a good track record. If Xiao Yao is here, he can take the place of the competition. The teacher puts him in charge of the event, but the guy is not happy because he was busy on an internship and an unexpected assignment distracts him. Xiao Yao picked up the list 
and in it drew attention to the freshman Wu Fu, who is currently in the early stage of the development of the Tong Xuan realm. He is not the only one who passed through the mystical realm. Why was this man able to earn a place among those present? Fan Kong told the story of how Wu Fu defeated him with a magic weapon. He is sure that if he is taken away, then the freshman will not be able to fight back. In this case, Xiao Yao decided to cross him off the list. Tian Gan is curious how many people Wu Fu contacted. Xiao Yao himself is trying to stop him. President Lu once again drew the attention of the protagonist. That the fourth year student was trying to take him out of the competition. But Wu Fu was completely calm. He looked at the girl with eyes that showed no interest at all. Maybe she did not notice his indifference. Tian Gan got up from his chair. He decided to stand up for the freshman because Wu Fu's abilities are not bad. Even he does not consider himself his opponent. This position surprised everyone present. Since they know, He Tian has a personal grudge against Wu Fu. Why is he helping him? Silence reigned in the room. The protagonist and the student council president exchanged glances. Xiao Yao stated that he didn't want to hear about the guy's ability. He prefers to check them out. President Lu warns of danger. Xiao Yao's strike approaches the protagonist. He was unable to harm the boy after sensing his furious aura level. Six star swords levitate above the fourth year's head, since Xiao Yao is in the Huajin realm. Now, Wu Fu will show him his true power. All the conference participants realized that the guy was going to make a breakthrough now. Miss Lu asks him not to act like a lunatic, as he must follow the stages of cultivation in order to achieve a breakthrough. The freshman is still too young for that, because those present claim that the Star Sword technique is not the protagonist's own power. They asked for trouble. The situation is heating up. There was an explosion in the conference room. The glass windows shattered into small pieces. Everyone coughed. It was the breakthrough that caused the explosion. Now, Wu Fu is in the realm of Tong Xuan. Is he qualified enough to take part in the competition? Xiao Yao no longer has any claims against him because the guy broke into the Tong Xuan realm. Wu Fu will take advantage of this chance. He said goodbye and promised to see me at the finish line. As he walked out the door of the conference room, he heard a short laugh. He was praised for breaking into the Tong Xuan realm at such a young age. Wu Fu portend a promising future. This is Li Zhu. He is a master who has broken through the final stage of Yuan Sheng. The Tongshuan realm is no match for her. Behind the closed door, they discuss the plan to get rid of Wu Fu. Xiao Yao can't resist the power of the Tongshuan orb. Zhou Xuan finds it hard to believe that his opponent just broke through the intermediate level. But Xiao Yao claims that the breakthrough was made in the conference room. No one except Master Li Zhu knows his level of cultivation. Why is Wu Fu aware of this information? Who is he? It does not matter at all, because Li Zhu is going to attack him anyway. The guy swung the knife at Wu Fu's neck, but he dodged. The guy is not going to give away his secrets. His magic weapon is transformed. Li Zhu began to suspect that his opponent might have forged his own sword. In that case, I better let him live longer. The guy stopped. Wu Fu asked what was the matter in confusion. Now Li Zhu doesn't care who he advised to forget about purifying the elixir. In a past life, the master was killed by Li Zhu with an elixir. It turned out that Ling Song was still perfecting alchemy. If the main character dares to fool the guy, he promises to kill him. Wu Fu noticed that his opponent was not trying to kill him. It seems we need to accelerate our own development. Far away in the mountains, a master practices his techniques, uses a special cultivation oven. He was interrupted by Li Zhu, who announced Wu Fu's arrival. In an instant, the furnace with the miracle elixir exploded, suffocating the space. Master coughed. But he's all right. The student fears for his health. Ling Sun is confused. What did he do wrong? In his hands is an extinguished supreme magical elixir. The man failed again. Judging by what happened in the previous life, it should have happened six months earlier. It would be better if Wu Fu could refine the pill in advance. It will be boring to watch the previous life repeat itself. The master asked the main character to come closer. The guy last time gave him a powerful method. The old man does not know what he should give him in return, but he has many tablets of the elixir left. He asked the student to bring them. These are the best varieties that he has been perfecting lately. Wu Fu can choose any in any quantity. 
the guy took the red pill of the elixir and threw it behind his back. This caused bewilderment for the master and his disciple. Li Ju immediately threatened him with reprisals, but Ling Song stopped him. Why did Wu Fu do this? If he did not like the pill, he could choose another one. If the protagonist was right, then the red elixir is called Kik Shui. The master realized that the young man could recognize the aura of the elixir using the aura of the earth. This is a huge talent, but Wu Fu is too mysterious. The Kixue pill can help people improve their vitality and blood, but the pill in the guy's hands has the exact opposite effect. The master looked at him with contempt, but the disciple did not believe him at all. Ling's son has been practicing alchemy for over 200 years, and now a stranger throws away his elixirs and says that one of them is poison. The man asks for proof. If Wu Fu didn't say a word today, then Li Zhu would let him die here and now. Wu Fu suggested that he try it, and the master insisted on it. Li Zhu swallowed it reluctantly. Everyone held their breath in anticipation. The student took out his knife to attack the guest. He made a dash towards Wu Fu, but the pain stopped him. This is what the protagonist expected. Li Zhu grabbed his stomach and began to ask the master for help. The old man finds it hard to believe what's happening. The student asked him for forgiveness, but he does not understand why. Wu Fu is sure that there was something wrong with the elixir. Well, it's definitely not because of the master's technique. The reason was the poisonous aura of his body. This alarmed Ling Sun. It looks like their guest knows alchemy. Wu Fu's knowledge is enough to understand the reasons for what is happening. Li Zhu asks the master not to listen to this nonsense. He is sure that the young man is up to something, but the old man ordered him to shut up and he meekly agreed. Li Zhu was angry that the master scolded him because of a stranger. He went into another room, slamming the door loudly. Wu Fu returned to the conversation. The guy took the used pill in his hands. Its texture is amazing, but he felt something was missing. It dawned on the master. The young man surprised him today. No wonder the old man's experiments can't progress. It seems now he has found a solution in which there is nothing special. The man thinks the pills were destined. Thanks to Wu Fu, he could finally improve them. Li Zhu is surprised how the guy found out about this. It's hard to believe this is just a coincidence. The main character came to the student hostel. He made his way down the long corridors to his room. At the door, he was greeted by disorder and scattered things. Wu Fu was scared for his friend. Papers are strewn beside his bed. The guy stood at the entrance in bewilderment. He reached for the switch and turned on the light. Wang Meng huddled in the corner of the room and Xiao Ha sits next to him. Wu Fu breathed a sigh of relief after confirming that Oni was fine. In joy, he grabbed his leg. He assures that if the guy was late, he could find him dead. The main character is trying to calm his friend because he is already here and there is nothing to worry about. As compensation, Wu Fu brought a mysterious flask. Wang Meng doesn't know what this elixir does. Maybe it will give him a lot of power. The guy opened the vial, thereby releasing the flow of energy. Lightning erupted in the sky above the city. Li Zhu saw her and decided that this was a breakthrough. He hopes it's not Tian Zheng. Wu Fu's cultivation methods are very unique. The man is half a step to the next sphere. The Shu family receives guests. Wu Fu is late as usual, and Ching Ching is tired of waiting for him, but her father ordered her not to enter until the guy arrives. Now the head of the Shu family had learned the half-step technique given by the protagonist. For a long time, guests are forced to wait for one person. Those present assume that this is some kind of big man. The man thinks that the Shu family and Wu Fu get along well with each other, and maybe they are up to something. He called his accomplices and ordered them to ruin the party by keeping his eyes on Shu Ching Ching. Finally, the front doors opened. Wu Fu entered the room. Ching Ching was indignant that he was late, and everyone was waiting only for him. The guests were surprised that the half-step master was expecting some kind of child. Zhou Xuan thinks this guy just got lost. The girls don't like that he's always late. 
Wu Fu is surprised that because of a simple set of techniques for sublime energy, the family threw a big party and they didn't expect the Xu family to show much respect for the child. The man pulled out a knife and attacked Wu Fu, but the guy did not notice him and reacted in time. The old man saw this rudeness and killed the attacker with a clear blow to the head. With a bullet in his forehead, the man fell to the floor. The guests are a little shocked by what is happening. This is the power of the half-step master. <laughs> From the second floor, the head of the Hu family descended to the guests. He ordered these guests to be thrown out of the estate. They are shocked by such categoricalness. The old man tune up his vocal cords. From now on, the Shu family will single out Wu Fu as a role model. Showing their indignation, the three guests defiantly decided to leave the party. According to the chief Shu Konglan, he is a bad half-step master because it is stupid to take an ordinary boy seriously. Xu Yingsheng stopped his father from reacting angrily to the guest's remarks. Recently, a man broke through. Now he is the first half-step master of their city. The Wu Fu method clearly does not belong to this world. He may have a different source. Finally, the man said that from now on, the Zhu family is their enemy. It would be better if they kept silent. The main character smiled enigmatically. In this case, it is better for newly minted enemies to stay at the banquet. Shu Konglan pounced on them with renewed vigor. He grabbed the brothers' heads with strong hands and squeezed their skulls so hard that blood poured onto the floor. From now on, the Shu family will have nothing to do with their He family. The rest of the guests do not quite understand what's happening. They feel like they missed something important. A member of the He family asks not to forget that his son is an important disciple of the Zhongyang sect. So Xu Konglan sent a winning blow to his head. The man was frightened, but Wu Fu saved him. This left Xu Yingsheng, Xu Konglan, and Qingqing Qing bewildered. The main character immediately explained. He understands the kindness of the old man who is trying to protect him. But in the current situation, if there is anyone who can kill the attacker, it must be Wu Fu. Mr. He does not believe what is happening, but the star sword is already in his chest. In the courtyard near the dormitory, a group of students mocked the fat man. Wang Meng didn't have time to take his pills. He accidentally dropped a vial of them. Some guy called and said that the fat man should be bullied. President Liu came to his aid. She saw scattered peas and picked up one. In her hands was the elixir of supreme power. Where did Wang Meng get these pills from? This is a rare medicine, each pill can cost millions, and the guy turned out to have a full bottle of this elixir. It looks like he doubted his friend for nothing. At the He family home, a son mourns his dead father. Li Meng Yao, clutching his head, offers to apologize to Wu Fu. He Tiangan negatively slammed his fist on the table and laughed evilly. The girl believes that they are not his opponents, and if they continue in the same spirit, they may die. First Wu Fu brother, and then father He Tiangan. The guy is not going to apologize to anyone. He walked closer to Meng Yao, grabbed her head in his hands, and stared piercingly into her eyes. She is his ex-enemy, maybe he misses his ex-girlfriend. Li Meng Yao does not fully understand what Tian Gan wants. The guy does not just dream of the death of the enemy, but strives for Wu Fu to suffer for millennia. The girl is afraid of such words. In the hostel, Wang Meng cultivator pills. It's really worthy medicine in the early stages of cultivation, but the guy is wasting it. The student council leader's phone rang. She controls the entrance of her own investigation. Her accomplice didn't find anything suspicious, but there's one place that shouldn't be underestimated. In the Shu family's estate, the showdown continues. The guests believe that the head of the family cannot control other residents just because that he became a half-step master. The man invites Xu Zhangshi to stop and forget everything that happened today. The old man agreed. Now everything is clear. The He family has great power in the city. If it wasn't for Wu Fu's help, Grandpa Ching Ching would have been a hopeless half-step master. The protagonist recalled that he could not break through the Tongxuan sphere. Zhu Konglan noticed that he had a really good sense for people. He sees Wu Fu's aura. He Tiangan came to the Shu family's house again. The boy's hatred for Wu Fu hadn't ended yet. He did not come alone. His family does have a high level of stupidity. The Shu family members looked at each other. At their gates are Tianjiang and the Zhongyang sect. Shu Konglin asks them to stop. 
He is outraged that a hidden sect dared to appear in front of his family's gate. Why are they here? Another person is sitting in the car whose face is not visible. It was he who dared to act so boorishly. Incredible energy emanated from the car, which Chu family members, and Wu Fu could not help but notice. Ching Ching assumed that Master Zhong was behind the tinted windows of the car. He's here to see who destroyed his family. The man congratulates Konglin on his success. Xu Yingsheng is sure that this is the patriarch of Zhongyang, He Tianzhang. He worries so that Wu Fu does not succumb to provocations. Because the Grand Master is invincible, you need to be careful. Approaching He Tiangan, Wu Fu declared that destroying the Zhongyang sect was easy, the guy was not strong enough to fight him. Anger boiled inside Hai Tian Gan and he wanted to attack, but the master stopped him. He rolled down the car window a little and said, It's better to get out of here. At the same time, the car left and the Shu family followed her with their eyes. Wu Fu's mouth was leaking blood in a thin stream. Ching Ching is worried about his health. She noticed something was wrong. Assessing what is happening, the guy believes that it is becoming more interesting and more interesting. Shu Konglan put, Grand Master's power can suppress Wu Fu's power. They headed back to the house to rest. The protagonist is clearly not an opponent to the master. He shouldn't act like he's one of them. You don't have to be such an arrogant person. The guy laughed. In the Shu family's courtyard, Wu Fu took Ching Ching's wrist. The girl was a little embarrassed. If her development has reached its limit, then one must break through it again. So the guy wants to ask her for a favor. Ching Ching did not expect such a dialogue. Wu Fu asks for help finding the remaining pieces of the sword. The girl tries to control herself so as not to get angry because of his impudence. Wu Fu began to cultivate. Xu Wing Shang supposed the guy is about to break through. As a result, a whirlwind of energy formed in the sky above their house, which is visible from all parts of the city. A sword is gradually formed from it. They could not help but notice in the Zhongyang sect. He Tiangan reported this to the master. The magic sword formed in a short amount of time. Their opponents must have taken the top of the earth and sky to develop. The man ordered the entire sect to be sent to collect the fragments of the magic sword. At the same time, Su Konglan ordered his men to help Wu Fu collect all the magic sword shards at any cost. They don't quite understand why they have to take the boy so seriously if his power only comes from the mysterious realm. The man is sure that there are two outcomes of events. Either Wu Fu will be able to take them to a whole new level, or it will be the end of their family. Xu Yingsheng does not want to believe that their future is a bet. Konglan is 90% sure he will win. Wu Fu is holding half a sword. He concentrated all his energy and an incredible flash of light engulfed the space around him. It was so powerful that it caused the stones to rise into the air. Some wooden elements of the exterior were incinerated, leaving only smoke behind. Unknown whether the guy has reached the middle level of the mystic realm. Previously, he didn't know anything at all, but now he can surpass Ching Ching. It makes her very angry. The girl plans to leave to train, but her father wants to stop her as it's too late. Ching Ching will no longer let the arrogant boy outdo her. Wu Fu would not let the Shu family's efforts be wasted in helping him find the pieces. The guy reached into the inside pocket of your robe and took out two flasks of elixir. As a thank you, Wu Fu gives them to Konglin. Although he became a half-step master, cultivation should not be neglected. The man was very surprised to see Quexen pills in his hands. They are very hard to find, and the guy gave him two full flasks. Nowadays, physical strength is what distinguishes the ancestors and Tao masters. Once Konglan breaks through it, he will become the new master. The man thought, thanked the guy for the advice. If he can find the shards, Wu Fu will give him another martial art technique as a thank you. The head of the family assures that they will do their best. Xu Yingsheng noticed that his father was thinking about something. He does not know whether his assumption is true or not. The He family will be the very first step towards moving forward a relationship with him. The son thought Ching Ching was the first step. Kong Lan thinks the gap is too big. He can't understand it. He Tian Gang seethes with anger. He plans to avenge the death of his brother and father by killing Wu Fu's best friends. Tomorrow morning they will meet again. The guy gave the order to the killers and they left to carry it out. 
Li Mong Yao is not sure if they are capable of such a task because they are in the qi purification stage. He Tiangan is sure that Wang Meng is a useless piece of garbage. Three assassins will be enough for him. The girl must remember her own task. Tiangan put the assassination plan on the table. Now it starts to work. In the student council office, President Lu handed the same diagram to Wu Fu Tu. This time, the guy's opponent is quite strong, so don't forget to be careful. The main characters would not participate in this competition if his opponent would be too much. The girl added that the battle lasts only three days. Kendo's school teacher said she wanted to teach Wu Fu how to use the sword herself. Kendo is a modern martial art of Japanese bamboo swordsmanship. It traces its history back to the traditional samurai ball handling technique, Kenjutsu. The girl held out a photo of the teacher. This is the same woman that the guy met earlier by the lake in the forest? He asked President Lu if she really wanted to teach him. The girl replied that Lo Si knew a lot more about Kendo than he did. The student council office doors opened. The same teacher from the photograph entered them. Wu Fu looked at her in disbelief. Lo Shai asked the guy to follow her. She will not teach him swordsmanship. Wu Fu will hone his skills. President Lu, I didn't quite understand what was being said. Lu Si studied Tongsuan for many years. Her strength surpasses the imagination of the protagonist. They came to the forest for training. The teacher listens to President Lu's forest words. The girl whispers to her friend to leave the past behind and surrender to Lo Si, because a lot of time has passed since then. After all, she is their teacher. The woman heard this and got angry because the students think she will lose. President Lu was afraid that she had said too much and chose to leave, leaving a friend to practice. Wu Fu and Lu Si stood opposite each other in the big clearing. He never dared to brag to his teacher. She drew her sword to fight. Many blue and pink butterflies fluttered in the air. They enveloped Lo Shi, leaving behind a colored trail. Wu Fu didn't care. He used the same technique. The guy is grinning looking at the teacher. The head of the student council had never seen such strength before. When it comes to swordsmanship, Wu Fu prefers to take first place. And no one will dare to claim it. Lo Shi can't believe his ears. She feels the aura of the sword. No wonder he wasn't hurt. I touched the butterflies with my hand. The dual swordsmanship aggregate can be turned into such a form. No wonder this process always gets stuck in the Tongsuan realm for many years. How does he know all this? There are too many shortcomings in the transformation of the swordsmanship of the teacher, among them even two fatal ones. It seems that Lo Su doubted his conclusions. Wu Fu proposes a deal. She will help him adjust the list of battles and he will tell her about the shortcomings. Lo Su thought that the guy was going to switch opponents to win easily. But on the contrary, he asks to force all the strong to fight against him, even though he just broke through the mysterious realm. He never had a chance to prove his strength. The teacher agreed to his terms. The guy asked Lo Si to follow him. They hid in the depths of the forest. Student hostile, screaming can be heard from the garbage cans. A man in a robe is hiding there. His victim is very different from the description of the customer as he tries to get up. Behind him, Wang Meng quietly crept up. If not for the pills that Wu Fu gave him, he begs to forgive him. He won't dare attack again. In any case, he was already dead when he came to kill the fat man. Xiao Ha attacked the robber. Meanwhile, Wu Fu, along with the teacher and the head of the student council, reached Lu Si's house, which is located inside a huge tree. The guy asked Miss O to wait outside. Woman A's restroom turned out to be much better than he expected. The key aura in him is pretty good. Lo Si demands to be told about the shortcomings of her swordsmanship. He suggested that she take off her clothes and come closer to him. The teacher doesn't want to do it. Wu Fu seems to want to die at her hands, enveloped by mysterious energy. It seems to be Shui Su's swordsmanship. This is the secret legacy of the family. How can a guy know about this? There is nothing for him that he does not know about. And now she needs to undress and lie down. She agreed and would trust him for now. Lucy carefully slid her dress off her shoulders, but suddenly noticed that Wu Fu was also undressing. The girl expected that he would simply give her his energy and not be naked. The guy explained that this is necessary for energy exchange. Lo Shi feels awkward and asked to start quickly. They stood opposite each other. Energy meridians surrounded their bodies. 
the teacher closed her eyes in embarrassment. Inside, it is now a whole set of modified Shuixu sword skills. The question never leaves her mind. Who is Wu Fu? The guy makes sure the recovery process is complete. Lu Shi reached for a piece of huge white cloth and covered her naked body. Unnoticed, the teacher grabbed a sword and held it to Wu Fu's throat. There seems to be something that doesn't suit her. Shuixu swordsmanship is a secret legacy of her family. Well, never passed on to outsiders. How her student found out about him. Wu Fu not only knows Zhuxiu's swordsmanship, she also knows that her grandfather will be coming back soon. Lo Shi was momentarily speechless. The guy approached her and whispered that this world could not hide anything from him, including her. Finally, he left something for the girl. That's all he wants to ask. A lot of talented people participate in the competition. Strong first-year students also join the championship. He family home. Tian Gan to discuss an important matter with his brother over a meal. The guy asks to kill Wu Fu and hands him a sword. This is a gift to be used for self-defense. Brother asks not to worry because no one is worthy to be his opponent. Xiong Kui was born with divine strength. Even intermediate level students cannot be worthy opponents. Tian Gan is sure that thanks to him, Wu Fu will die. Ring room. The time for competition has come. The gong sounded. The master announces the start of the third college competition. There were many spectators in the hall. Among them are members of the Shu family. Shu Yingsheng has just arrived. His daughter has been sitting in the hall for a long time. She did not expect to see her father. A man has come to protect Wu Fu but can't find him anywhere. The guy hasn't arrived yet. There is nothing wrong with his ability. He is very strong after all. Ying Sheng is worried about the fact that the main judge of this competition is Master He Tianzhang, and Zhong Yang also sent his elders. Among them is Han Po. He has been a half-step master for many years. There is a possibility that Wu Fu will die if Han Po wishes. The Xu family was seen by the head of the student council. In her opinion, they were sent only to protect the guy, and she also saw Konglin behind her. Wu Fu came with Zhao Ha. He was met by Qing Qing with his father. But suddenly, a guy came out from around the corner who was looking for a meeting with him. This is He Tian Gan and Xiong Kui. The main character started barking at them. The opponents looked at each other. Xiong Kui promised to roll up and tear off Wu Fu's head during the battle. After the threats, the guys left. A list of battles appeared on the screen. Today, there will be three confrontations. Wu Fu takes part in each of them. His first opponent will be Xiong Kui, his second will be Huang Tian, and his third will be Hei Oran. The audience couldn't help but notice. Tian Gan considers the arrogance of this behavior of his enemy. He thinks it was the head of the student council who made the changes to the battle list. Wu Fu might lose in the first round. The referee struck the gong. The first opponent of the protagonist appeared in the ring. The audience is shocked by his strength. In his hands are two battle axes. His cultivation power had reached the Yuansheng realm. An argument arose between a girl with glasses and a red-haired guy. She questioned the strength of Young High College, and that shouldn't be done. Qingqing Qing is worried that Wu Fu's opponent is very strong. If he feels like he can't take it, I should be embarrassed to jump out of the ring. The main character never lost. Viewers suspect that there was a mistake. Yunkai College had actually sent a boy who had just passed through the mysterious realm to fight against the power of the Yuan Sheng. The situation is similar to suicide. It is unlikely that the kingdom of Tongsuan will be able to compete with such a force. The audience is sure that Wu Fu will lose. President Lu, Lu Si, and Qing Qing held their breath. Tian Gan in anticipation of retribution. The fight begins. Opponents are about to pounce on each other. Meanwhile, student hostile. His ex-girlfriend made his way into the room to the main character. If Wu Fu dies, she must sink his reputation to make everyone hate him. The girl walked over to his bed. Student hostile arrived to teach her a last by order of the school board. There are people in the college who want to kill Wu Fu. His nephew dissuades him, convincing him that he does not need to bother himself with participation in this matter. They head to the protagonist's room. Women's screams are heard in the corridor from the room. A crowd of men burst into the room. They found Li Meng Yao naked in a student's bed. She claims that the guy drugged her. 
Zhou Xuan asks his uncle to look into what is happening. His friends are shocked that Wu Fu dared to do such a thing in broad daylight. It's disgusting that a student drugged an ex-girlfriend. Tears welled up in Meng Yao's eyes. Alas asked if she was sure she was telling the truth. It seemed to the girl that Tian Miao had to arrange everything. She said it happened last night. Li Meng Yao received a slap from the teacher. There was a red hand mark on her cheek. Zhou Shen did not expect this turn of events. Alas stated that her words were not true. The girl was sure that Tian Bao had told the master everything. The man explained that he could not blindly trust all the students and also added that last night Wu Fu did not spend the night in the dormitory but stayed with the Shu family. Li Meng Yao realized that she had made a mistake. Alas asked the students to follow him. Zhou Xuan suggested that the girl die alone to avoid shame. The battle continues in the championship. The main characters dared to humiliate Xiong Kui, which made the guy very angry. He promises to kill Wu Fu. His true power was unleashed. The Zhu family puts all their hopes on Wu Fu. Chun Kimada dash and rushed to run towards the enemy. The protagonist blocked his attack using the 3333 secret technique. There was an explosion in the ring. The onlookers have a hard time believing that Wu Fu has recently reached the realm of Tongsuan. He may have been a secret disciple of the Buddha for many years. Xiong Kuya is upset that his move didn't work. At the same time, the enemy did not even use a sword. Wu Fu doesn't need it for an opponent like Xiong Kui. This is the arrogance of his side. The guy promises to tear him to pieces. The main character looked at him with a smirk. His opponent wishes him to go to hell. Tian Gan is worried. Wu Fu manages to fight against cultivator Yuan Sheng with full strength. The situation in the ring is heating up. Xiong Kui released a shuriken while his opponent had his back. President Lu wants to warn of danger but there is no need. Wu Fu controls space. His opponent is a Yuan Shen cultivator. Why does Qing Qing have such a serious face? The girl judges by the arrogance of her friend. Even though his opponent is a top-ranked cultivator, he is weak, so don't worry. Wu Fu to attack instantly. Behind him appeared a radiant image of the Buddha. The aura around the guy is saturated with energy. He easily stopped the battle axe flying in his direction. The weapon shattered into small pieces. Yi Xiong Kui can't believe his eyes, even though Wu Fu told him that cultivation is never a measure of a person's strength. The audience screamed in delight. Kong Lan noticed that the sword goes all over the body. This is the highest martial art. Xu Ying Shang is very surprised. His father is here to prevent Zhong Yan's attack, as he is the main referee for this championship. If he was really up to something, even a half-step master wouldn't be able to stop him. Wu Fu wants to finish the round. Xiong Kui calls the master for help. This breaks the rules. Kong Lan and his son froze in anticipation. He Jun was in the ring and stopped the main character, explaining that they came here to learn, not to cause harm. Wu Fu and the old man looked at each other. Now we have to announce the winner. Ching Ching is sure that it will be her friend. Tian Gan approached Xiong Kui and held out the Thai sacred sword given by Elder Li Ju. He is needed to kill Wu Fu. Fortunately, the main characters heard his instruction and with one movement of the hand with the help of energy, he crushed it into small pieces. He turns to the master, reproaching him for the promise that they came here only to study. In that case, he will strike back at Xiong Kui. The old man only had time to warn his apprentice of the danger. It was already too late. Soon, karma will overtake the fat man. Wu Fu asks him not to run away until he receives his gift. Master Zhong is worried about Chu Kong. Xiong Kui is dead. He Tian Gan plans to avenge the death of another brother. The murder took place in front of witnesses. The guy could live if he didn't try to kill Wu Fu. But now he is dead and the main character is alive. Tian Gan is going to kill him, but for this, it is better to get closer. The killer must pay for his brother's life. Someone shouted to protect Wu Fu. A bright light shone in the hall. The Zhongyang sect became alert. The audience does not know where the freshman has such strength. Someone suggested offending in order not to die. Han Po plans to join the battle. Kong Lan puts a hand on his shoulder to stop him. He considers himself his opponent. 
The elder finds it hard to believe that the Shu family would go to such lengths for an ordinary boy. It is no longer his business. Han Po warns Kong Lan as he has just broken through and is unworthy to fight him. Xu Yingsheng and her daughter are trying to protect the guy. Ching Ching said that her grandfather detained the family master <laughs> and Wu Fu had better run away from here. <laughs> Ting Gan taunts him because he hides behind a girl when it comes to death. Yi Xiao Ha barks from the podium. Ching Ching is sure that you should not react to Tian Gan's provocations and be mistaken. Wu Fu took to the air and declared that all his enemies are better off dead. Ching Ching suspected that things would turn out this way. Tian Gan ordered his sect members to kill Wu Fu. Xu Ying Sham noticed Hui Tianzhang in the ring. The old man thinks Wu Fu is almost done and he will soon solve his problem with Konglin. The elder noticed that something was not going according to plan. Wu Fu formed a ring of energy. Ching Ching noticed a sword in it. Beams of light emanated from him. The energy was so strong that it destroyed everything in its path. Tian Gan barely managed to stay on his feet. It is unimaginable, but his enemy had just broken through the realm of Tongsuan. For Wu Fu, there is nothing he can't do. The amazing show is just getting started. He raised his right hand up to control many swords. Master Zhong is furious. The man wants to stop him and won't let the guy move anymore. Tian Gan panicked and waves his fist and threatens Wu Fu. He hopes that the master will protect him by killing the enemy. Countless swords rushed into his body. There was an explosion, and when the smoke cleared, the audience saw the body of He Tian Gan pierced by sharp swords. He croaked his last words, calling for the master to help. Han Po almost touched Wu Fu, but in a couple of centimeters. His hand stopped obeying him. It's some kind of outside force. This is Ping Sun. He came to protect the boy. The old man demands that Han Po remove his hand from Wu Fu. He did not come alone, but with Li Zhu. His master ordered Wu Fu to be released. Everyone paid attention to the guests, including the main character. Han Po thinks that everyone wants to lure him into a trap. He is furious. The strings holding it together broke. Now let Wu Fu get ready to go to hell. Ching Ching asks to be careful. Han Po sent huge crystals towards the guy. They must attack from all sides. There was a collision which was knocked down by those present. Then silence followed. All that can be heard is Xiao Ha barking and Ching Ching trying to yell at Wu Fu. This attack contains the full power of the master. The guy must die. The girl does not stop considering him arrogant. The smoke gradually dissipated. Wu Fu is alive. In his hands is a sword. The strength of the half stepmaster seems to him insufficient. Ching Ching is scared to death. She thought that a friend had died. He managed to dodge Hanbo's attack. Kong Lan is glad he has a really great sense for people, but it's too early to rejoice. There is not a drop of fear in the eyes of the protagonist. Han Po prepares a new attack. A pair of crystals rush towards Wu Fu, for him and for Ching Ching. He cut them and they flew past. Even if his opponent is a master, he'd better run. The old man wants to see if the guy has the courage. Wu Fu spoke the mysterious name, Xing Chen Jian, and then destroyed all the crystals flying in his direction and ascended into the air. The boy said another name, but now it is Luan Xingchen. Han Po got angry as he called his opponent, a cheeky little bastard. The entire hall is flooded with light. Viewers think that Wu Fu has turned into a monster. He can fight against a half-step master. Their confrontation is really exciting. Powerful explosion in the ring. The glow has faded. The guy used a mysterious sword technique. Han Po's arm is cut in several places, Muscles are visible in the cuts. His injury is terrible. Ping Su reminded that he was only a half-step master but still dared to harm his man. The old man realized that he couldn't kill Wu Fu today. They escaped with the Zhongyang sect. Wu Fu is their eternal enemy. Han Po promises to take the protagonist's life next time. Xiao Ha barks happily at the sight of his master. Wu Fu grabbed his head. Ching Ching ran up to him. The girl is worried. The protagonist lost his balance, stumbled and rested his face on Miss Lu's soft chest. The girl promises that everything is fine now. Wu Fu cannot die since Han Po's cultivation is not enough. He needs to speed up his recovery. Seeing this, Ching Ching felt embarrassed because her breasts are much smaller. 
Ping Su did not expect Wu Fu to master the art of alchemy and also has a unique approach to the art of kendo. The old man laughed. Konglin and his son are surprised. The head of the Su family assumed that they were looking at a grandmaster. Ping Song extended his hand with the pill to the boy. This elixir was improved on the advice of Wu Fu a few days ago. This can help a guy a lot with his physical strength. The young man thanked the master. Men are surprised that the Grand Master himself showed up here, not to mention that he's close to Wu Fu. Ping Song's skills in alchemy used to be unable to progress for many years, but thanks to the young guy's advice, the man was able to clear the doubt in his mind. If Wu Fum does not mind, he can consider the Grand Master as his student. The guy coughed. Ping Song is worried about his condition. It's okay. He's just a little tired. It is difficult for him to make such a decision what to think about. But the fact is that Ping Song is his master without knowing it. If Wu Fu had not returned to the past, he would not have been so good. Zhong Yang sect. Han Po announces his order. Wu Fu, the Shu family and the hidden master must die. A boy entered the throne room. The master was looking for him. The ring was badly damaged, so if there is no contestant left, the presenter will announce the winner of the Yunhai University student, but he was stopped. Two boys and a girl entered the room. It's unacceptable to them to let a freshman steal all the attention. They seem dangerous. Wu Fu needs to be careful. These are the student council members of the South China Martial Arts Academy. They created this championship. Xiao Ha began to bark at the sight of the huge red-haired boy. Wu Fu asked him to leave. The dog didn't stop barking. It's annoying. Because of the noise, he decided to hit the dog to plug his dog's mouth. Wu Fu won't let that happen. With one movement of his hand, he laid the insolent on the shoulder blades. The boy fell to the ground with a crash. The South China Academy students stared at Wu Fu. The power of vice is considered to be quite good, especially when it comes to physical strength, but their friend was immediately knocked out. The guy woke up, he is confused, does not understand who he is and where he is. The freshman really did not let Yunhai University down. He ordered the stranger to get out. Xiao Ha continued to bark. The South China Martial Arts Academy is the leading university in Beihang province. They are the guests of this tournament. It is rather unreasonable to offend them. The guy with the glasses is not happy with being a freshman. He wants to see the high school students of Yunhai University. Spectators in the stands suddenly remembered that they had not done their homework or that their cat was about to give birth and they had to return home. They began to disperse away from the ring. They are just chickens. No one can fight. The girl invites Captain Chinked to watch her kick a freshman's ass in the ring. President Liu asks his friend to be careful. The South China Academy student heard that Wu Fu is very good. Xu's sister plans to check on him. The protagonist is sure that her little hammer is not enough. Is it so? Need to check? The competition has begun. The girl promises to crush him. She used a giant hammer and thinking that she won, rejoices in vain. Her hammer broke into several pieces. All thanks to Wu Fu. Sister Su definitely did not expect this. Looks like this is the end. She lost. The students of the South China Academy will let the freshman get all the attention. Captain Chin thinks the guy should be ashamed. Wu Fu suggests that he use his fist to talk to him if they are having a hard time accepting defeat. Ching Ching by the head. Her arrogant friend doesn't know the South China Martial Arts Academy at all. Captain Chin thinks Wu Fu's ability is not bad, but showing himself like this is too much. The protagonist last time stayed on Earth very little, and his name is not heard. But he didn't expect it to be an academy. If what the South Chinese martial arts student is saying is true, then Wu Fu should one day come and learn from him. Captain Chin thought he was a fool, but promised to visit their university in a few days. The championship ended with the victory of Wu Fu. Ping Sun heard that the South China Academy can be completely compared to Zongmen. Wu Fu should pay more attention to this matter. The master gives him an elixir that can be used for an instant breakthrough. If he fails to reach the Yuan Sheng realm, he will have less trouble than before. The main character thanked the Grand Master. Wu Fu opened the flask and released the elixir. Ping Song warily asked if he was going to completely devour him. Ten elixirs for him to reach the Yuan Sheng realm, but he will explode first. This boy must be crazy. Wu Fu collected ten pills in his hand and swallowed them. 
Now in his hands is the Starblade. The Grandmaster asked the Li Zhu to defend himself. Now Wu Fu will break through to the Yunsheng realm. A blade hovered over his head. At the tip of the tip is a red drop. She is about to fall on the main character. He raised his face to the sky and boldly looks towards change. A powerful pillar of light that accompanies the transition to a new sphere is visible from everywhere. This is the realm of Yunshen. Li Zhu was upset. If he doesn't act immediately, he won't be able to catch the magic soldier, that is, Wu Fu, the Shu family joined them. Konglan praised the young man because he is so young but very promising. Now the main character is a cultivator at the Yuanshan stage. The head of the Shu family coughed. He had better go home to heal his wounds. With my daughter and granddaughter, we went towards the house, but the guy asked them to linger. Konglan noticed the blade flying swiftly towards him. There is a grimace on his face in pain. The bodyguard wanted to pounce on the guy because the Shu family treated him well and he harmed the master. Xu Yingsheng stopped him because Wu Fu is actually healing Kong Lan. The old man knows it too. His and narrowed, they burst several capillaries. The man coughed and then vomited blood. The son and granddaughter were afraid for him. Li Ju believes that Wu Fu's personality is unbalanced. Behind Kong Lan, a flame of light shone. The Grandmaster explained that this was a great opportunity to observe up close. This is just an aura ray but a guy can use it not only for healing internal wounds, but for his own development. Konglan thanked the savior. If this method did not help him, then the damage would be very serious. Li Zhu perceived Wu Fu as a small stone. Well, it turned out that he turned into a big headache for the guy. He must get rid of the opponent as soon as possible. What you have is your own fault. Wu Fu suggested returning to the city. Ping Sun followed Li Zhu. The apprentice dutifully followed the master. The school bus brought the students back to Yunkai University. The students say goodbye to President Liu. Everyone has their own business. Everyone will be celebrating today. He was amazing. He fought and won in all his fights. Although it used to be called garbage, be that as it may, it has become pride. Wu Fu can finally rest well. President Liu says it's too early to rejoice. The guy should pay the council here soon. But why would he do it? At the school gate, Wu Fu meets Zhou Xuan with a banner. He congratulates him on his victory. This confused even Miss Lu. The main character does not fully understand what is happening. The guy immediately told him that while he was at the championships, Li Meng Yao snuck into his room. Having previously agreed with Hei Tian Gan, she did not plan to slander his honest name. But unfortunately for her, Zhou Xuan and his uncle Alas figured out her plan this morning. Wu Fu announced that Tian Gan was dead. The guy was glad that he did not help his former friends slander the pride of the school. Zhou Xuan locked Li Meng Yao in her dorm room. Wu Fu thanked him for that. The president asks you to remember to visit the student council later. The main characters came to the room of his girlfriend. There were cries for help from there. She asked to open the door right now. Luckily, the door opened. Wu Fu stood at the door. Li Meng Yao did not expect to see him alive. She still doesn't know what happened to He Tian Gan. The guy laughed. Because his worst enemy is dead, his family no longer exists. The girl does not believe her ears. She immediately rushed to her ex-boyfriend, tried to explain, as if she shouldn't have done this and that it was all because of Tian Gan. The girl admits her mistake and asks to be allowed to leave. Meng Yao is half-naked. Her body is covered with a white sheet. She came closer and pressed her chest to the ex-boyfriend's torso. He will let her go, then the girl will forever remain his devoted servant. It's good for two. Looks like she really thinks she can get off easy. Her body whistled and flew off and hit the wall. It's because of Wu Fu's punch. He covered her with a white sheet. Without touching her, Li Meng Yao should pack up and leave. In the corridor, Zhou Xuan and his friend are trying to quietly eavesdrop on everything. The room suddenly became quiet. Li Meng Yao came out the door. Guys wonder what happened inside. The girl vows to make Wu Fu's life hell. The guy thinks they should back off. You shouldn't mess with such a strong opponent. The main character hangs his things. Suddenly, the door slammed behind him. The roommate is happy to see him. He appeared in a new image. The guy is wearing a light blue jumpsuit, a red cape, 
and a superhero badge. He asks a friend to rate the outfit, who Wu Fu spat out water in surprise. Xiao Ha vomited on the bed from what he saw. Wang Mong seems to be sick in the head. He is sure that got a lot stronger. But the friend explained that with such strength, he would not be able to overcome even Xiao Ha. The dog barked approvingly. Wang Mong does not agree with him because he is just a dog. He pointed at him with his finger. But at that moment, the mouth slammed shut. The guy admitted defeat. Xiao Ha straddled him. Wang Meng collapses on the floor in tears. He can't even beat a dog. Wu Fu picked up his pet in his arms. He just almost broke through. His friend said that the Grand Master was looking for the guy. Looks like it's not something important. Let him wait. This is the most important among the Grand Masters. But if he wanted to see Wu Fu, he had to find him himself. Great Tianfu Garden. President Lu wonders if Xu Qing Qing knows Wu Fu's real identity. It looks like the girl is investigating him. But it's not. It's just curiosity. But nevertheless, her father wants to see the guy. Ching Ching assumed that Miss Lu is the daughter of the Liu family. Her question sounded somehow timid, and when the girl repeated it, her friend put her finger to her lips and asked to be quiet. Mountains, forest, low seas house. Xiao Ha on the stone table. The main hero uses a special technique on it. This is for the breakout dog. The girl is surprised by the fact that they are capable of a breakthrough. Xiao Ha was imbued with a strong aura current. If his bloodline is special, some abilities may awaken in him. Lo Zi asks Wu Fu to teach her Xiu Xiu skills in her spare time. This is a combination of double fencing. If she wants to control this power, then there is only one option. Start dual development. The girl can't wait, but now Wu Fu has no time. He must help his pet. Lo Shi was upset. Luckily, the guy can use his hands. This answer did not quite suit the girl. Wu Fu explained that he could use Mu's palm seal to offset the negative effects of this swordsmanship combination. He understood that the girl misunderstood his previous answer, but she assures that she thought exactly as he said. Lo Si suggested we start. First phase, butterflies and flowers. Then the rest of the phases followed. Using the eighth, the girl decided that she would not be able to move on to the ninth phase of Siusio's swordsmanship. There is no problem in this. Wu Fu will enter her mind to guide personally. The girl's pupils narrowed. She found herself without the edge of Wu Fu's space. Lo Shi froze and examines everything around. The guy offers to come in and practice. She is confused by Wu Fu's appearance. He is naked. After much practice in Wu Fu's mind, the girl successfully made her way through the Xiu Xiu swordsmanship. She is happy in her heart. Lu Shi spread her arms out to the sides and laughed out loud. She forgot that the guy was still here. And when she saw him, she was embarrassed. The girl wanted to apologize, but Wu Fu asked not to distract him. He was still helping Xiao Ha break through the orb. The dog turned into a cocoon and then turned into a butterfly. Can this dog fly? Suddenly the cocoon cracked. Xiao Ha escaped from it. Looking at him, the room was swallowed by mute silence. The dog has wings. Lo Shi is indebted to Wu Fu. It was easy for a guy. But if she really wants to thank him, the guy's gaze is directed to her huge breasts. The girl explained that it was impossible. She can't give up. She is his teacher. Lo Si will be the first to return to the school grounds. Wu Fu was left confused in the middle of the forest. He glanced over at her. He just wanted to ask to find more opponents for him. Why is Lo Shi so cruel to him? Xiao Ha agreed with him. Not far from the school, a group of guys decided to deal with Zhou Xuan. They remember very well how he used to be at enmity with Wu Fu, but now he flatters him. They spotted a dog in the bushes. For Zhou Xuan, life is more important than flattery. The guy jumped up to swing his elbow. Xuan covered his face with his arms crossed, but he was saved by Xiao Ha with an unexpected appearance. No one has ever seen a cultivated dog before. Wu Fu followed him out of the bushes, looking for his pet. What are these people doing? Wu Fu was noticed by a group of guys. Their leader plans to fight him. He jumped up and raised his right leg, planning to hit the main character with it. Wu Fu doesn't know him, unlike the enemy. He knows that in front of him is a murderer who destroyed the He family and has now taken on the Zhongyang sect. The red-haired guy's foot is getting closer and closer to the main character's face. Without using much effort, Wu Fu pushed her away. He finally realized that in front of him was one of the Zhongyang participants. In that case, 
he doesn't need any other reason to kill him. The Elder warned the sect members to be careful with the magical soldier Wu Fu, and the main characters made a powerful blow to the head of the attacker. He could barely stand on his feet, but didn't show it. It was an eight-figure blow. The guy is sure that his forces are superior to the enemy. He created a protective barrier around himself. From such force, even his friends scattered in different directions. Now, Wu Fu will not be able to hit him with the sword aura. The guy asks to give up the magical soldier in exchange for his life. He does not yet know that the enemy is standing behind him, holding a knife to his throat. Wu Fu ordered not to move. He releases the attacker and asks him to hand over to the Zhongyang faction and stop sending him garbage. The guy still can't come to his senses. He did not notice how the main character was behind him. Wu Fu will always welcome members of the Zhongyang sect. Zhou Xuan finally accepted that Wu Fu was no longer the cowardly boy he was before. Xiao Ha barks happily next to him. The guy thanked him for saving him. As a sign of gratitude, he treated them with delicacies. Xiao Ha needs to eat more slowly to avoid choking. Zhou Xuan still has a lot of goodies. Wu Fu is no longer surprised that his pet has gained weight. Now he knows who fed the dog. Zhou Xuan does this. Not because he had differences with Xiao Ha's master, he just loves animals. Wu Fu advises him to take care of himself first. In a few days, an officer from the Nianhua Martial Arts Academy will visit the school. The main characters ask to deal with this without him. He doesn't need Zhou Xuan's care. The most powerful enemy has not yet appeared. The man broke the cup with a strong blow of his fist. He is furious because the Yuanshan kingdom was very strong and someone thought that they were running away from people. Military forces should not concern themselves with earthly matters. Wu Fu continues to provoke them even if it is against the rules. Elder Han Po near his throne. He was instructed to bring the guy's head. Meanwhile, in the mountains in the house of Master Ping Song, a man casts a spell over a pot. He came here personally to focus on refining the pills. When it comes to the art of refining knowledge, Wu Fu can surpass it. The student placed it on the table in front of him. If the teacher's knowledge in the art of cleaning is in second place, then who dares to take first place? Perhaps this is pure coincidence. The door swung open and Li Ju turned towards her. Wu Fu is standing at the entrance. He felt a strong aura. Ping Zong is the grand master of pill refinement. The man didn't answer. His student looks at the guest suspiciously. Wu Saha sleeps cutely in her owner's arms. The main character grinned. It seems to him that Li Ju did not think of giving up. Once the Grandmaster manages to refine the mixed soul pill, which requires 35,000 elite earth strings, he will be able to build a superior foundation. This alerted the master. Young people should not know about this elixir. Wu Fu admitted that he did not belong to this world. He has already reached cloud nine. The guy looked down on creatures with intelligence reaching the ninth cloud. His goal is higher. Li Chu dropped his blades. He was shocked by the information that Wu Fu had reached the ninth cloud. He should get rid of his opponent as soon as possible. The guy told the master that he was going down the mountain and would not return tonight. The main character heard envy in his intonation. He asks Ping Song not to bother the student with persuasions not to be fascinated by greed. The man realized that he stopped caring about Li Zhu from the moment he tried to poison him. Wu Fu was surprised. Then, the master already knows the truth. The protagonist's skills are excellent, but when the time comes, will he be able to? The guy interrupted him, offering to follow Li Zhu. The man refused. Perhaps this is the home that his student should have. Wu Fu said that Ping Zong had not changed at all. Also full of altruism towards his student. It seems that the old man began to guess little by little, but Wu Fu promised to meet him later. Wu Fu went into the forest. He knows that Li Zhu is nearby. The main character encourages him to stop hiding and fight in battle. Li Zhu came out from behind the tree. In Wu Fu's eyes, he is just as helpless, capable only of threats. He does not have a method like the Yuan Shan realm to defeat the opponent. He hopes for minor misunderstandings. Li Zhu threw thousands of blades towards the enemy, but it did not work. Unfortunately, he is still inexperienced. If the guy was in the Yuanshan realm, Wu Fu might die due to such an attack. Li Zhu does not believe that his enemy managed to avoid a collision. Now that he had stopped, it was Wu Fu's turn to strike. Their swords touched. 
Li Zhe realizes that Wu Fu's sword is very heavy, considering his constellation sword technique. The hero managed to cut the tree with one blow. The star sword skill belongs to the Li Zhu sect. They fought for a long time, trying to figure out who was stronger. The guy didn't expect his opponent to be so strong. He wonders where Wu Fu learned this skill. Who is he? The main character uses the fourth form. Their swords sparkle from the blows. A powerful explosion occurred, and Ping Song saw it. The man hoped that his students would understand their mistakes and stop, but the opposite happened. The master did not expect that they would plunge deeper and deeper into conflict. When the pill is ready, the old man will leave this place. After the explosion, the smoke cleared. The bloodied Li Zhu leaned on Wu Fu's shoulder. Before his death, he is worried about who Wu Fu is and why he knows so many special movements that belong to the guy. Having uttered them, the exhausted Li Zhu fell to the ground. The main character explained that in their past life, he possibly called him brother. After these words, Wu Fu destroyed Li Zhu's sword with one hand. A foreign body is approaching the earth from interplanetary space. It passed through the atmosphere, leaving a trail of sparks behind it and fell in the highlands. Wu Fu sensed the aura of the new item. The guy looked out the window. The sword fragments may have reappeared. A clone of black cars is approaching Yunhai University. They are greeted kindly by representatives of the educational institution. Among them is President Lu. A girl got out of the car. For her, this is an ordinary school with a weak aura. Her cultivators look pathetic. She heard that Miss Lee is the student council president of Yunhai University. A freshman from this educational institution won the tournament. They didn't take their eyes off each other. They didn't meet to fight. Yunhai University is the champion of this year's tournament. They came to deliver the quota. Miss Lu mentioned that they had already received a precious spiritual elixir as a reward. The girl does not know what quota we are talking about. This is a permit to attend South China Martial Arts University. The students standing nearby were delighted at this opportunity. After all, this is the best academy in Yunhai. The opportunity to compete for the South China Martial Arts University means having stronger opponents. Wu Fu will not miss this opportunity. The guy happened to be nearby because of some business. Nobody expected to see him here. Captain Chin came for Wu Fu as promised at the tournament. He handed a piece of paper to the guy without explaining what it was. Sister Shu whispered in his ear that this was an invitation from the South China Martial Arts University. The main character is thinking the academy believes that he has the best base for training. Moreover, South China Martial Arts University is full of masters. Sister Su communicates with Wu Fu without respecting subordination. She seduces him. This makes Ching Ching very angry. The girl doesn't see anything good in having good-looking breasts. At that very moment, she noticed that standing next to her, President Lu had a beautiful cleavage. Ching Ching feels left out. Wu Fu crumpled the invitation in his hand and threw it over his shoulder. Sister Xu is perplexed. A freshman must know his place. The reputation of the South China University cannot be ignored. Perhaps the guest's reaction will serve as a lesson to Wu Fu. The guy stopped the main character by the shoulder. It was their university's idea to let him visit South China University. Wu Fu better stop being stubborn. The guy assumed that the freshman was scared. In response, he felt resistance. Wu Fu suggests not starting the fight in this place. The student did something wrong. Cracks appeared on the ground under the protagonist's feet. He turned his head to the guy who put his hand on his shoulder and asked if he really wanted to die. The main character struck. At Yunhai University, you must behave in accordance with the school rules and all violators will be severely punished. The guy who tried to find contact with Wu Fu is sitting unconscious against the wall. The main character not only offended the Zhongyang sect, but also endangered a student at a South China University. He believes that Captain Chin is not qualified enough to approach him. He promises to repay Yunhai University for today's shame. Meanwhile, in the mountain cave, Wu Fu sniffs his wet finger. Something seems wrong. She and Lo Si take a bath while practicing Xiu Xiu fencing. It seemed to the teacher that Wu Fu was cold. 
There should be no wrong thoughts in her head during classes. Otherwise, it will lead to nosebleeds. It was already too late. It happened. Lu Shi covered her face with both palms. Meanwhile, behind the mountains, Wu Fu and the teacher are looking for Miss Lu. She looked into the cave, trying to find her friends. Xiao Ha kept her company. The girl comes into the light. She is sure that Wu Fu is nearby. Miss Lu froze in surprise, mid-sentence. A naked teacher stands in front of her, covering herself with a dress, as well as Wu Fu in her underwear. The head of the student council seethed with anger. Lu Shi begs her to calm down. Everything is not as she thought. Miss Lu refuses to listen to her because she is not blind. Suddenly, the girl noticed a set of double developments on the stone and calmed down. Wu Fu asked why she was looking for him. All because of his last meeting with the South China Martial Arts University. His students harbored a deep hatred for Yunhai University. There are many masters in it. Miss Lu added that it cannot be compared with the Zhongyang sect. She didn't finish. Shocks and vibration were noticeable. The three of them froze. When everything stopped, Wu Fu announced that someone was coming towards them. This is one of his old friends. The guy should go and say hello. The sun is at its zenith, but another source of light is visible in the sky. Something like a comet. She landed near Ping Song's house, raising a lot of dust around. The man came out to greet the guests. Two people descended from heaven to him. The elder is a young tanned guy with a golden chest in his hands. The master waited for them for several days, hoping that they had brought with them the medicine he needed. The men complied with his request, medicine for a young guy. Ping Song thanked the guests. The aura in this world is too weak, but it is good for refining the mixed soul pill. He must have rare materials at this time. The method of refining the mixed soul pill was lost a long time ago. If he can refine it, the elder will help him. Someone is rushing to meet you through the trees, raising a column of dust behind them. Ping Song guessed that it was his friend from Earth. Judging by the appearance of my uncle's young friend, to me, all people tied to the Earth are trash. Wu Fu's face appeared from the dusty cloud. The master is worried that he could get hurt. The guy did not receive serious injuries. The man introduced his brother Bai Wan to him. Ping Song traveled through the worlds to learn more about the pills. His closeness with earthly beings was inevitable, but there was no need to introduce his brother to the unknown youth. Wu Fu had known this man for many years. He thought that the master would be able to avoid a fatal tragedy when he finished refining the mixed soul pill, but the guy did not expect that the day would come when Bai Wan would come to this world. Behind Wu Fu, the flame burns. The man does not remember the meeting before. His young companion plans to protect his mentor. He covers his body with his own to prevent the attack. The guy's swords collided and the tanned guy's weapon cracked into small pieces. He did not have time to understand what was happening. The guy doesn't understand Wu Fu's movements. The main character orders him to get away, but the young man does not give up and protects the teacher. Ziwan failed in his task and flew several meters to the side. It's time for Bai Yuan. Ping Song asked Wu Fu to stop. The guy used the star sword skill, Heavenly Stream. Bai Yuan recognized this as a dance with death. The man loudly slammed his right foot onto the ground and then a protective sphere formed around his body. Due to its impact, Wu Fu was thrown aside. His strength is not enough. The guy made the wrong move considering his current development. It's hard for him to escape from Bai Yuan's hands, having come alone to protect the master. The pitiful bastard from the Yuanshan kingdom dared to act rudely to Bai Yuan. Killing Wu Fu is as easy as killing an ant. Ping Song stopped his brother by taking his hand. Bai Yuan did not understand his action, but it turned out that the mixed soul pill could be improved to a high quality only with the help of the young man. It's hard to believe, but it's true. Ping Song used to think the same thing. The method of refining the mixed soul pill had been lost a long time ago. If it weren't for it being restored to 70%, Bai Wan wouldn't take the risk. If his brother was telling the truth, then what happened today would be forgotten. Wu Fu assures that he will be able to show himself. The guy asks to borrow Dan's stove from the Grandmaster. He plans to improve the pill himself. Ziwan mocks the main character. He does not believe that this is possible with a low level of development. Well. 
alchemy can be used at a development level. Wu Fu put his palms together. The process of refining the mixed soul pill has begun. The men standing nearby looked at the young man with suspicion. His alchemy seems familiar to them. The room was filled with a blue glow. Wu Fu crossed his four fingers. The oven lid has opened and light shines from inside. It looks like the main character was able to purify the mixed soul pill. Bai Yuan is surprised by the young man's success. He managed to improve the elixir of immortality. He asked to look at the result. Wu Fu doesn't mind. He really did it, but what can this pill do? Ping Song decided to test it for himself. The master put the elixir in his mouth. Zi Wan still has doubts, but he also decided to try the pill. He brought the blue pea to his lips when suddenly the grandmaster began coughing up blood. The guy immediately abandoned this idea, thinking that the elixir was poisoned. Bai Yuan said nothing. He was prepared for such an outcome. People are still stupid. Ziwan accused Wu Fu of attempted murder. He plans to kill him today. The main character just laughed and asked to look more carefully. Ping Sung is filled with new strength. The room is flooded with rays of blue light. The rejuvenation pill worked. Li Ju poisoned the master for many years, as a result of which his development could not move forward. The elixir helped cleanse his body of all the toxins accumulated in his body. Wu Fu was able to completely refine the rejuvenation pill and add an unusual effect. Interesting. Although Wu Fu said that refining a pill did not require a high level of cultivation, an ordinary person would not be able to do it. Bai Yuan asked if there was any hatred between him and the young man. He doesn't remember the meeting before. From the moment Bai Yuan tried to kill the rose, Wu Fu realized that he had not changed at all. This boy is not as simple as the old man thought. He must keep a close eye on him. A guy from the Yuanshan kingdom would not be able to deceive him. The man admitted his mistake and asks not to blame him for it. The main character does not believe in his sincerity. He turned to Ping Song with the hope that the elixir would help him in the near future. Moreover, the guy asks the master to pay attention to the people around him. Wu Fu got a message. He doesn't remember anyone on earth using messages instead of calling. Having examined the contact's name, the guy was horrified. Same the house is destroyed? Today, the Zhongyang sect will destroy the Xu family. Xu Konglan protects his family. The granddaughter does not want to leave without her grandfather. Her father begs her to run away with him. As long as they are alive, there is hope. Ching Ching believes that Wu Fu will come to the rescue. Han Po laughed. If the guy comes, he will be able to see their lifeless bodies. He ordered the death of the head of the family. The members of his sect rushed to attack. Xu Konglan asks not to dream about it. He would not be able to harm the Xu family even if the man had to sacrifice his own life. He fights desperately. Grandfather's eyes glow due to powerful energy. He crouched down, hitting the ground with his hands. The sect members scattered in different directions. Han Po laughs at his opponent. He can hardly defend himself, but he still needs to take care of the others. The elder plans to deliver the final blow. Su Konglan managed to protect himself with the sphere. It takes a lot of effort. The impact created a cloud of dust. Everyone who was inside it coughed. The grandfather heard the voice of his son and granddaughter. They didn't abandon him. Han Po waved his fingers three times and sent a stream of energy towards the Zhu family. They prepared for death. Ching Ching shouted Wu Fu's name. It seems that someone blocked the elder's attack. Han Po said that anyone who goes against the Zhongyang sect will die. When the dust settled, I couldn't believe my eyes. Huge wings covered the Xu family. And when the danger was over, they opened and everyone saw Xiao Ha. It has become several times larger. The elder does not know how this creature ended up here. The reason for his appearance could not be anyone other than Wu Fu. The guy's laughter is heard. Hin Po became angry. Before him is his worst enemy who will not let him go alive. Wu Fu managed to come to the rescue. He asked Xiao Ha to take care of the Xu family. No matter what the young man does, the elder is confident that he will kill him today. Xu Yingsheng warns that Han Po is a reverse reality level master. He's just one step away from the journey. 
Wu Fu will not last long since he is only at the Wanshan level. Don't be arrogant, but it's too late. The elder intends to send the young man to hell. When suddenly, Bai Wan appeared behind him. They followed Wu Fu, thinking that something serious had happened. The guy disappeared from them too quickly. Han Po knows that in front of him is a great master of the Dao Dao level. Is he really on Wu Fu's side? The Grand Master asks the Zhongyang sect leader not to leave so quickly. The Shu family breathed a sigh of relief. These are the Wu Fu people. It turned out he had reinforcements. Han Po realized that the entire sect could be destroyed, not to mention killing Wu Fu. Bai Yuan explained that he had come to observe and would not interfere in their affairs. Han Po thought they were on the guy's side, but Bai Yuan denies it. Ping Song addressed him, reminding him that Wu Fu had done him a great favor. He feels he must give back. If the brother refuses to help the young man, then Ping Song himself will take the fight. Bai Yuan stopped him because this only concerns the lower planet. They cannot intervene because they come from outside. Wu Fu reassured his master. He is confident that he can handle it alone. Han Po laughed. Today, his opponent is definitely playing with death. It is still unknown who will give up his life today. Dealing with the head of the Zhongyang sect requires a little effort. The main character uses the Star Sword's reverse technique. Seeing this, Han Po uses sword combat formation. Then he directed them at the guy so that he could evaluate his defensive formation. Hundreds of swords filled the space. This technique belongs to the Zhongyang sect. The Shu family feared for Wu Fu's life. Ching Ching shouted his name. The guy realized that unfortunately, he would not be able to destroy all the swords, but he will try to destroy the structure. The swords began to shatter into small fragments. Han Po can't believe his eyes. He considers this impossible, taking a closer look. The old man saw Wu Fu in front of him in a new image. The guy assures that the elder will remain here forever. The Su family can't believe their eyes. Wu Fu is still in front of them. Ziwan asked the master in a trembling voice what had happened. Bai Wan explained that the guy was in the Yuanshan kingdom, but he should be feared. The main character is full of strength. His opponent doesn't give up. Gritting his teeth, Han Po continued to threaten the guy. In fact, he understands that it is better to run away from here. There is no turning back. Wu Fu tightened his grip on the sword in his hand. He longs for the death of his enemy. The air sparkled from the movements of the sword. It seems that the guy managed to pierce Han Po's body. The elder did not expect such a turn of events. The blow injured the elder's shoulder. He didn't have time to defend himself. All the people present held their breath. Ziwan didn't see what happened, what Wu Fu did. Bai Yuan also failed to follow his movements. Han Po is surprised that the enemy managed to wound him. The man covers the wound with his hand, trying to stop the bleeding. Wu Fu will make him pay for what he did to the Shu family. The head of the Zhongyang sect lost sight of the young man. At first he saw one beam, and then there were more of them. They surrounded Han Po. The elder screamed in anger. The stinking brat won't be able to outwit him. Putting his palms together in front of his face, the old man surrounded himself with a sphere. He promises to find the enemy wherever he is hiding. Grandmasters are watching what is happening from above. They formed a protective dome around themselves. Bai Yuan believes that it was stupid of Han Po to release such massive aura attacks considering his current state. Wu Fu is not hiding at all. Now, the Elder's aura cannot cause him any harm. Han Po does not give up, continuing to attack again. Despite this, Wu Fu approaches him without hindrance. He was able to easily break through the Elder's protective barrier. Having approached each other as much as possible, the moment of truth has arrived. Han Po thinks he caught the guy by surprise, but it's too late. The head of the Zhongyang sect understood everything. The Star Sword is too close. He screamed. His body is thrown aside. The old man doesn't want to accept defeat. A powerful explosion occurred. The people standing nearby could barely stand on their feet. After it, a huge crater formed in the ground. Bai Wan assumed that Wu Fu was not such a weakling, but such a powerful striking effect suggested that he was not below the level of a master. Zi Wan wonders what happened to him. The guy is still hanging in the air. The energy holding him stopped. Parts of the armor dissolved in space. He quickly falls down. Ping Song was afraid for Wu Fu. 
Ching Ching rushed to help the guy. She caught it and carefully placed it on the ground. The girl looks at him with frightened eyes. He made her worry. It is impossible to judge his condition unambiguously. Wu Fu assures that the Shu family's technique has absorbed a lot of energy, but he is fine. After saying these words, the exhausted guy fell onto Ching Ching. The others rushed to her aid. Wu Fu fainted. Ping Song is more worried than the rest. He did not even allow his brother to examine the young man. The master will do it himself. Ching Ching cannot calm down. The girl wants to know what happened to Wu Fu. Ping Song is confused in his guesses. The guy might be seriously injured. Han Po specialized in counterattacks. The girl thought that Wu Fu could not be saved. The master explained that such powerful energy cannot be released without consequences. Bai Yuan informed Ziwan that they were returning. He won't wait for his brother. Ping Song needs time to say goodbye to his earthly friend. They disappeared, leaving behind a yellow and purple trace. Ping Song noticed this. Bai Yuan thought that Wu Fu was a capable cultivator, but it turned out that he was nothing more than a reckless child. Ziwan wants a more detailed explanation. It was stupid to shorten your life to increase your potential. Perhaps Wu Fu will spend the rest of his life lying in bed. The Shu family asks the Grandmaster to save the guy. There must be some way. The Elder calms them down. Wu Fu is fine. Judging by his pulse, there is still strength in his body. One can even assume that he made a breakthrough. At first, the man also thought that the young man had shortened his lifespan, but it turned out that he had another way to break through. How many more secrets does the main character keep? Ping Song did everything he could. Now it was the Shu family's turn to take care of him. The entire Zhongyang sect must be scared to death. Meanwhile, lightning struck over the sect's hideout. The leader asks his subordinates to bring the girl here. We are talking about Li Meng Yao, holding her and the throne room by the arms. Syllables dropped Meng Yao at the feet of the ruler. The man ordered her to raise her head. She didn't dare disobey. Given her request for help to take revenge, he gives the girl the power of hundreds of demons. The leader hopes that Meng Yao will not let him down. She looks away. Miss Ben cooked chicken for Wu Fu. The Lu Ling family sheltered the Shu family after their home was destroyed. They couldn't do otherwise. It seems that Ching Ching Chicken will soon turn into coal. Wu Fu woke up from the girl's conversations. Xiao Ha was the first person he saw. The dog happily wagged his tail and rushed to lick his owner. Hearing a pleasant aroma, the guy went to the kitchen because he was hungry. Lu Ling yells at her friend because she turned the chicken into a biochemical weapon. She can't stand the smell anymore. Ching Ching assures that the chicken is just a little burnt. Miss Chu met Miss Lu while shopping and a school friend tagged along. Lu Ling is glad that she came with Ching Ching. Otherwise, Fu Fu would be left hungry. Miss Chu tried what she prepared. You definitely can't get poisoned by this. Miss Lu reported that the vegetable shop owner was scared to death when Ching Ching came to her to do her shopping. The girl took a dozen bodyguards with her. A door opened behind them. Wu Fu stood there. Miss Chu hurriedly hid the chicken behind her back. To eat. The main character looked closely at the burnt chicken on the table. A fly landed on her, took a few steps and fell dead. This alarmed the guy. He pretended that he was not hungry and could wait. When Wu Fu entered the room, Miss Lu joked to Ching Ching that her cooking skills had caused a fly to die. The entire elite of the Shu family gathered in the house. Zhu Konglan introduced the guy to his family members. If he needs anything from now on, he can contact the family elder personally. The man gathered these people in one place at the request of Wu Fu. The guy is going to destroy the Zhongyang sect. At first, the old man laughed, and then was horrified by what he heard. Such a young guy is going to destroy the sect. Zhongjiang school, although small, is not small at all. First of all, the Zhu family must deal with the sect's attacks. Zhu Konglan's subordinates are outraged by this decision. Zhongjiang is the main school, and acting like this is like wishing for death. The old man hit the railing with his fist. He apologized to Wu Fu for not being strict with his subordinates. The guy doesn't see anything wrong with this. 
the man ordered to start practicing. Xu Yingsheng examined the book that Wu Fu gave him. It describes the highest martial arts. This surprised even Xu Konglin. He couldn't believe his ears and decided to see for himself. This is really the same book. It is unknown how many more secrets the young man has. Mm. Konglan realizes that following the guy they can give their lives to make the right choice. The Xu family agrees to eradicate the Zhongyang faction. Wu Fu found a way out of the situation. First, the people of the Xu family should practice as he said. Their family is temporarily hidden. The Zhongyangs must not be allowed to find their hideout. Konglan agreed with him completely. Meanwhile, in the hostel. Previously, Wu Fu insulted Nianhua Budo College, but still goes to Wu Tong. He's going to pick up some things. Wang Meng doesn't have to go with him. The main character has already crushed other people. He will be bored without support. Wu Fu explained that he had no plans to play, but his friend still wanted to join in the fun. Wang Meng noticed that something had happened. A red-haired girl in a black robe approached them from the depths of the corridor. The guys didn't recognize her. In front of them is Li Meng Yao. Looks like she still wants revenge on her ex-boyfriend. The girl is not the same as before. She has new powers and a new image. Li Meng Yao narrowed her eyes and examined Wu Fu carefully. Finally, Wang Meng recognized her. He told his friend that he wanted to teach her a lesson, but the main character stopped him. Wang Meng is no match for her. He is confident that being at the level of deep knowledge, he will be able to defeat Li Meng Yao. Wu Fu brought him down from heaven to earth. Wang Meng will not be able to cope even with Xiao Ha, and the girl is at Yuan Shen's level. The main character suggested taking a closer look at it. The space behind the girl is shrouded in dark fog. Behind Li Meng Yao is a bunch of zombie-like scumbags. These are ghosts. Wang Meng was afraid of them. The girl promised Wu Fu that she would haunt him forever. To see him die painfully right before her eyes? Wang Meng hid in horror behind his friend. A huge force was directed towards the main character. He took a closer look. It seems the girl was forced to use a forbidden technique. None of this will work against him. In the distance of the corridor, Zhou Xuan came out of the room. He wants to deal with the fact that he dared to disturb his sleep. Seeing zombies in the dormitory corridor, the guy was frightened by their appearance and fainted. Subordinates rushed to help the boss. They dragged him into the room. The thugs didn't stop growling. Li Meng Yao will continue to entangle Wu Fu's mind until he loses his life. The guy laughed. His ex-girlfriend will haunt his mind until she dies. He waved his hand. His powers dispelled the shadows of the ghosts in an instant. Today, Li Meng Yao only came to say hello. Wu Fu does not need to hope for a cloudless future. The girl laughed ominously and left. The frightened Wang Meng finally relaxed. Li Meng Yao pisses off Wu Fu. Zhu Xuan regained consciousness. He shouldn't have been nearby, so the main character asked him why he was here. Zhou Xuan pointed to the broken door in Wu Fu's room. He came to replace it with a steel one, made of better steel. Wang Meng advises his friend to agree. Wu Fu listened to him, but he doesn't want to remain in debt, so he bestows the technique on Zhou Xuan. The guy fell to his knees and began to bow, while calling the main character a master. Wu Fu froze in surprise. He announced that he was going to leave Yunhai University for a while. These exercises are for strengthening the body during basketball training. As a master, he orders his disciple to complete them even ahead of schedule. The car is heading to Wutong. Unexpectedly for Wu Fu, Qingqing, Qing, Lu Ling, Lo Shi and Wang Meng went on the journey with him. Miss was worried about the safety of her student, so the girls had to go with him to protect him if necessary. South China Martial Arts Academy is located in Wutong City. This trip is just for the sake of negotiations. The students looked at Miss Ben, waiting for her to say something. Indeed, it seemed that her family lived in Wutong. When they reach an area of the city called Xiao Long Bao, she invites everyone over for a bite to eat. The girl left the option for guests to refuse to eat at her home if they wanted to order something else. Wu Fu asked to stop the car when they arrived at the building. 
Wang Meng is going to solve all the formalities. The room was booked. The main characters suggested discussing everything there. Two men stood nearby. They immediately noticed three beauties in one place. The girls heard this and became embarrassed. Lu Si decided to go home first. Wu Fu agreed with her decision. Wang Meng has already taken the room key. They can go up. Ching Ching immediately jumped onto the large, comfortable bed. Lu Ling received an invitation from the South China Martial Arts Academy. The girl offered to meet with them tomorrow. Wu Fu said he didn't care. Ching Ching doesn't understand why he even came to Wutong. This was necessary in order to find what belonged to the guy. Within the city, the influence of the South China Academy is enormous. In this case, Wu Fu believes that they should come to him themselves. Wang Meng is proud that his friend is so confident. The main character asked his friends to clean up and get ready because it was time for them to go. They reached the house. The guy did not explain to his friends why they came there. Ching Ching suggested that they were not looking for something, but for a person. With the help of the star blade, Wu Fu felt that he was almost there. Wang Meng asked if they needed to cut through the wall. It is not necessary. The door will open. And so it happened. The door opened slightly and an old man greeted his friends. He asked the strangers who they had come to see. Wu Fu explained that he came to the elder to discuss the deal. The man asked them to leave, since they could not offer him anything in return for what he wanted. The main character said sharply that everyone knows that the Huo family is based on the fighting technique of the Huo family, and together with the Luo family, they are called the Two Giants of South China. But no one knows that the Huo family's technology was lost. Ching Ching asks his friend not to talk nonsense. The guy is confident in his words. Its value is the complete military equipment of the Huo family, which the ancestor took with him to the grave. The old man stopped. He didn't expect to hear. Ching Ching didn't know that some ancestor of the Huo family had died. Wang Meng is also surprised. Few people know about this. The old man doesn't know how the schoolboy found out about this. This man did not know. The man decided to listen to him. It would not harm. Wu Fu is not sure that the deal will interest the elders. The man asked to follow him. All what the guy tells him should remain between them. This cannot be discussed at this time. Wu Fu assures that sharing this information will not bring him any benefit. Unfortunately, at this time, Wang Meng had already written news in the chat. He is afraid of the consequences when his friend finds out about this. The old man predicted that the guys, like everyone else, came for the fragment. It's in his hand. The fragment glowed bright red. At that same second, Wu Fu showed his sword. The man's eyes widened in surprise. The fragment immediately flew to the sword and its owner, the Huo family's training base. Wu Fu is going to show off the Huo family's complete fighting equipment. He asks you to watch carefully. The guy concentrated all his energy, and a tiger's head appeared above him, blazing with fire. A powerful blow is accompanied by flames. He managed to destroy a thick wall. The old man can hardly believe his eyes. This is truly the Huo family's martial technique. Wu Fu says that he almost forgot this technique because quite a lot of time has passed. Ching Ching asks him not to be arrogant because the guy speaks as if he knew the technique a long time ago. Wang Meng supports his friend. In his eyes, he's probably cool. Because of the loud sounds, Mr. Huo's granddaughter came running. She wonders how grandfather managed to destroy the wall. Opening the door, she saw Ching Ching Yi Wang Meng. The girl definitely did not expect such guests. What are they doing in her house? Mr. Ho was surprised that they knew each other. They were not just acquaintances, they even had serious disagreements. This is Xu, a student at the South China Martial Arts Academy. A few days ago, she was among those who came to Yunhai University to extend an invitation to Wu Fu. She has no idea why the guy came to their house. The main character said that he came for the sake of a deal. Xu asks her grandfather not to believe him. She did some research on this young man and discovered a less than ideal reputation. The girl is sure that Wu Fu can deceive her grandfather. Wang Meng and Ching Ching laughed quietly, covering their faces with their hands, because Xu did not understand what was happening. 
Mr. Ho believes that this is not the place for such conversations and suggested that his granddaughter step aside. She has a hard time believing that Wu Fu owns the fighting equipment and her family that Mr. Huo is looking for. They almost reached the gate when suddenly it swung open. Four men beat up a guy and threw him into the Huo family's yard. Among them was Jin Kang, their young master. The main character looks at what is happening with bewilderment. Jin Kang was surprised to see Wu Fu in front of him. The Huo family is not at all happy to see such a guest. Hearing loud sounds from the destruction of the wall, Jin Kang thought that Mr. Huo was passing on the Huo family's technique, lost many years ago to a newcomer. Mr. Ho never said that the equipment was lost. Jin Kan has a very high ego. The entire Wutong knows that if he allows the guy to marry his granddaughter Shuang Er, then he will never have peace. Jin Kan laughed. He wanted Mr. Huo to learn from Huo Shuang. Then he would pretend that nothing happened. The guy didn't think that the man would be so cynical. He ordered his servants to capture the Huo family. Shuang Er and his grandfather became angry. Ching Ching doesn't consider the Jin Kan gang to be people, but Wu Fu tells her that it doesn't concern them and suggests they leave. Jin Kan noticed that his appearance did not bother Wu Fu at all. He doesn't let his friends leave. Ching Ching says it's none of his business. Jin Kan points his finger at the main character, addressing the old man with whom he came. It looks like this is exactly the young man he was looking for. For this, he gets punched in the face by Wu Fu. He flew several meters away, hit the wall, and fell to the ground. Everyone present froze when they saw this blow. Jin Khan will die if he points his finger at Wu Fu again. The assistants rushed to help the young master. Wu Fu noticed behind him a strange old man in a dark robe with a hood. He extended his hand to the main character but did not grab him. Jin Kang orders his servants not to miss their offender and kill him. He yelled at the old man for being slow and not following orders. The assistants asked him to raise his head. In the air above him is the Wu Fu Star Sword. Jin Kang was scared. The main character asks to thank his luck. Today he's not going to kill anyone. Wu Fu called his friends to follow him. Shuang Er is amazed by the guy's courage. He has no fear of power. The girl considers him a great man. Jin Kang asks Mr. Ho who the guy who hit him is. Shuang Er said that this is her master's rookie. Jin Kang didn't believe it. She turned to her grandfather to confirm this information. The villain chuckled, turned around, and called his servants to follow him. He assumes that the boy is not a follower of the Huo family's technique. Jin Kang promises to kill Mr. Huo. Shuang Er is scared. She has no idea what she and Grandpa should do now. Mr. Ho doesn't believe what's happening. It shouldn't have happened. The granddaughter suggested that he ask Wu Fu for help. The man agreed. They had no more options. Wu Fu sneezed. If you believe it, then someone said his name. Wang Meng did not think that the day would come when his friend would get sick. Now the weather is deceptive, you need to take care of yourself. The main character noticed that someone was watching them from around the corner. Wang Meng suggested returning to the bar. The friends stepped off the sidewalk. Shuanger is watching them. The girl runs from one wall to another. After the next turn, she discovered that the guys had disappeared, reaching a dead end. How is this possible? Someone touched her shoulder with a finger. She turned around and saw Wu Fu. The guy guessed that she was looking for them. Ching Ching called her a fox and asked why Shuang Er was watching them. Miss Chu explanation. Without thinking twice, the girl said in her defense that she was worried that Jin Kan would attack them. She just wanted to protect. Ching Ching noticed her huge breasts. She threatens to puncture her silicone airbags if Shuang Er doesn't tell the truth. The girl admitted that she came to ask for help. The friends turned around and headed in the opposite direction. They don't care about her stupid problems. Shuang er said that the Jin family has great power, and now the Huo family has contacted them. Wu Fu stopped. Ching Ching slapped her forehead with her palm. The guy asked how things were going for the Jin family in Wutong. Jin Kang's cultivation is not that high, but his family's influence has produced many talented cultivators. Shuang er advises you to be careful. Wu Fu agreed, but the girl did not understand why. He agrees to help her get even with Jun's family. Shuang er shouted that she would not marry him even if she succeeded in destroying her enemy. Wang Meng and Ching Ching did not expect to hear this. Wu Fu asks not to make things up.
He just needs strong opponents. Shuang Er didn't expect it to be so simple. The friends arrived at the hotel again. Lu Ling met them at the entrance. There are a lot of people in the hall. They all look at Wu Fu's friends. They all came from the South China Martial Arts Academy. People act as if they are in their own court. You need to behave carefully. The guys consider the main character to be a hillbilly from an unknown university who nevertheless forced them to come to the hotel to meet him. They plan to beat him unconscious. Wu Fu offered to fight him. The academy students are outraged. How can he act so dismissively when he forced them to come here? They rushed into a fight. A guy standing to the side calls an ambulance for Wu Fu. The crowd surrounded the main character. Li Mongyao watches the fight from the second floor of the hotel. She realizes that their strength is not enough to fight Wu Fu. The guys cornered him. He deliberately pauses. In an instant, all the students at the South China Martial Arts Academy scattered in different directions. Wu Fu pushed them away with his strength. Captain Chin, whom the main character met at the competition, is quietly watching what is happening. This is his last opponent. Xiao Ha barks happily. Behind her is a huge fat man. He threw the dog against the wall and called him astray. Ching Ching and Lu Ling are worried about the condition of the pets. They ran to help him. The main character will not give offence to his pet. This was done by Jin Kang's friend. They were looking for Wu Fu to take revenge. Li Meng Yao is happy that Jin's family managed to find her ex-boyfriend. This is a great opportunity for a girl. Ching Ching and Lu Ling barely restrain the enraged Xiao Ha. Jin Kang suggested that they beg on their knees for mercy if their lives were dear to them. Miss Chu is worried about Jin Kang's life because he has done a lot to anger Wu Fu. The impudent man doesn't believe her. The main character took out the star sword and rushed at the offender Xiao Ha. The Jin family bodyguard intervened. He wants to protect the young master. Jin Kang's services believe that Wu Fu is doomed to die. The bodyguard covered the gentleman with a huge blue shield, but this is nothing for the main character. Jin Kang taunts Wu Fu for daring to stand in his way with his puny strength. The bodyguard became worried. His defenses don't seem to be working. Dozens of blades flew towards their gang. He only managed to cry out in pain. Jin Kang put his hand forward. He asks Wu Fu to stop. The main character said that no one dares to offend Xiao Ha and ordered to get out of the hotel. Jin Kang promised that he would leave immediately. The servants took his girlfriends and headed towards the exit of the building. Li Meng Yao is unhappy with the outcome of events. A green light lit up in her hands. The girl aimed it at Jin Kang and hit him in the back of the head. The guy fell at the entrance to the hotel. Lightning flashed in the sky. Four cars arrived at the main entrance. Li Meng Yao gloats that Wu Fu will definitely die this time. It was the Jin family who was on their way to deal with Jin Kang's killer. They are sure that Wu Fu did it. The guy believes that a member of their family does not deserve such a fate. Don't think that he can just leave. Wu Fu holds Xiao Ha in his arms. He was surrounded from different sides. These people are also eager to find problems for themselves. One of the Jin family attacked the main character. The guy quickly moved to another place, leaving the enemy no chance. Jin Kang was the only heir of the family. Students of the South China Martial Arts Academy and Wu Fu's friends will be buried with him. The guys got scared and started running. For this, they received bullets in the back. This was done by the old woman from the Jin family. She won't let anyone slip away easily. Wu Fu used his super speed and got close to the blue-haired guy. He had never seen such speed before. Half of the main character's face turned black and his eye glowed red. He assures that he did not kill the heir. The guy didn't believe him. Because of this, Wu Fu touched his forehead with his finger and then killed him like a bullet. Jin's family was horrified. Captain Chin insists that he would never have gotten involved with Wu Fu if he had known about his temper. Li Meng Yao laughs evilly. Her ex asked for trouble himself. Tva Wu Fu knows about her presence. Realizing that she had been noticed, the girl disappeared. Wu Fu was approached by an old woman from the Jin family. She doesn't care who he is. No one in all of Wutong would dare to help him. The main character thought for a moment. From her steps towards her, the floor covering cracks underfoot. 
This plump lady is not bad. She wants Wu Fu to accept his punishment. The woman crept up on him from behind. In her hands is a halberd. The attack failed. Lo Shi interfered. Using the technique that Wu Fu taught her, the girl destroyed the old woman. Everyone who was nearby froze in surprise. Mr. Ben stated that the Jin family cannot control the entire Wutong. The six deities of the Lo family arrived. They don't know what kind of god they are dealing with now. Lu Shi hurried to Wu Fu to inquire about his condition. The guy is confident that the Jin family will not be able to harm him. The old woman turned out to be alive. She coughed a little. The double sword tactic is already over. It seems that the old nun of grief Luisen can no longer tolerate loneliness. The woman is sure that it was Wu Fu who killed her brother. Therefore, he must prepare to meet his death. He will not have the opportunity to escape. Lu Si wanted to join in the conversation, but Wu Fu stopped her. He confidently said that he did not kill Jin Kang. Since the old woman dared to act against him, he intends to kill her. Ching Ching is delighted by his speech. The woman called the guy a lousy brat. The main character heard her words and decided to punish her. The sword aura approaches the old woman. She somehow withstood the attack. The young man's powers amazed her. He is only at the Yuanshan level. The guy is much stronger than they expected. Wu Fu uses the star sword technique. Energy appears from his palm. It enveloped the entire space. The old woman and her family members were afraid, but no one was hurt. Is there something wrong? Li Meng Yao panicked. Wu Fu heads straight towards her. The guy noticed her some time ago. He threw the girl at the feet of the Jin family. The old woman understood who he was looking for. Li Meng Yao pretends that he does not understand what is happening. The woman asked if Wu Fu wanted to say that he was accused because of her. The guy believes that their family is not worthy of him explaining this. They need to accept this fact or leave. The man considered him a fool in love who did not realize who he was talking to. Lu Xi and Wu Fu head towards the exit. The girl offered to visit her house. Grandfather is waiting to meet Wu Fu. Ching Ching wants to go with them. The bodyguard asks the woman what they should do now. She ordered to go and find out who the young man really was. She must notify her people of her brother's death, otherwise they themselves will be killed. Li Meng Yao, lying at the old woman's feet, laughed. The woman asked what happened. The girl replied that she knew Wu Fu, the residents of the Lucian family. Wu Fu greeted the family. Their grandmother met them. This morning, her granddaughter told her that Wu Fu is a special person. She joked to Lu Si that Wu Fu was also handsome. The girl became embarrassed. Ching Ching pulled out her eyes after hearing this. She reached out with her hand and pinched Wu Fu's elbow. The guy turned around and didn't understand the reason. Ching Ching called him an idiot who wants only her to make the first move. The grandmother asked the maids to take the guest to rest. Lu Si has to go with them because Grandma wants to talk privately with Wu Fu. She asked to follow her. The guy did just that. They entered the hall. The woman said that she didn't want to beat around the bush about his differences with the Jin family. She knows everything. The guy helped them improve the Zhu sword technique. The family is very grateful to him. It wasn't difficult for Wu Fu. It turns out that she can't just stand by and watch the young man die without making any effort. But the Lu family is no match for the Jin family. She asked Wu Fu to return Kostian. The guy realized that the woman was afraid of being dragged into this. Grandma Lu Si noticed the smirk on Wu Fu's face. He is amused by her lack of knowledge about Jan's family. The woman considers this family to be very influential, and Jin Kang is her first heir. She is sure that the guy got involved with the wrong people. She still didn't understand that Wu Fu didn't kill him. The Jun family tries to force Li Meng Yao to talk. The girl promises that she is not lying. The lady grabbed her by the hair and is trying to knock out the truth. Meng Yao's face is covered in bruises and abrasions. She assures that the problem is not only with Wu Fu and with the girl lover. There were already serious disagreements between them. She suggests they go and ask Wu Fu themselves. 
The guy with glasses confirmed the above. The woman ordered 10 guards to be sent to the Lowe family's territory to find the scoundrel. She will make him pay for this with her blood. Li Meng Yao entertains hopes that today, Wu Fu will say goodbye to life. A maid entered the hall where Mrs. Lo and Wu Fu were located. She told the bad news that Jin Rong had sent 10 guards to their residence. They had already reached the mountainside. The woman once again warned Wu Fu about the power of the Jun family. The guy said that when they arrive at the residence, they don't even dream of returning safe and sound. Slope of Mount Lu Shen. Wu Fu went out alone against 10 Jin family guards and Jin Rong herself. The woman thought that he was relying on the protection of the Lu family. Lu Si warned that all the guards of the Jin family were at the virtual energy sphere level and there were 10 of them. Jin Rong ordered the guards to remove two hostages from the crowd. She asked if Wu Fu knew them. In the clutches of the Jin family is the head of the Huo family and his granddaughter Shuang Er. Wu Fu is not happy about this meeting. Ching Ching recognized the hostages. This is the Huo family. Lu Shi didn't expect that the girl knew Huo Shuang. Not long ago, Miss Shu visited them. The main character wants to find out what the robbers want. Jin Rong ordered him to be killed for the life he took. The guys believe that trash at the Yuanshan level had no right to attack the young master. They intend to tear Wu Fu into small pieces. The main character will not be allowed to die easily, but will be tormented a little. Wu Fu doubted their words. He doesn't think the attackers will make it out of here alive. Ching Ching wants to help her friend, but Grandma Lu Si stops her. And I need to help him. She thinks that this guy, the grandmother fell silent without finishing. The clouds parted above them. Three silhouettes descended from the sky. Their ground impact is incredibly powerful. The guys who attacked Wu Fu scattered in different directions. Miss Chu felt a strong aura. Han Po, Bai Wen, and Zi Wang did not come from heaven. Jin Rung noticed the Dao Master. She didn't expect her opponent to call for help. The elder handed him a small box and added that if it weren't for Brother Bai, the guy would hardly be still alive. Wu Fu thanked the elder for helping the thing he brought. With its help, the main character is going to kill the villains. Han Po didn't expect to hear this. Although Bai Yuan thinks Wu Fu is arrogant and self-confident, he still wants to look at the confrontation with his own eyes. The guy asks him to watch carefully. Today, he is going to test his sword with the members of the Jin family. The old woman ordered to catch him. The soldiers rushed to attack. They got too close to the main character. Wu Fu pulled out his sword. The position of the weapon is getting closer and closer to his body. The main character surprised his opponents with his speed. He rose into the air above them. Red sparks appeared around Wu Fu and turned into blades. They are directed towards the members of the Jin family. A thousand blades fell on the heads of the opponents. Jin Rong held her breath. Bai Yuan did not expect to see such a technique from Wu Fu. Xiao Lan admires the main character. The smoke after the impact cleared. Two lifeless bodies lie on the ground. Now it was Wu Fu's turn to attack. The guy ran towards the remaining fighters of the Jin family. They formed protective spheres around themselves. For the main character, this is not an obstacle. He pushed the opponents back. The Jin family is angered by Wu Fu's arrogant behavior. He is at a pitiful Yuan Sheng level, but still wants to defeat Ten. He needs to know his place. Ching Ching and Lu, she offer their help. Wu Fu rejected her, convincing her that these guys were not his rivals. They are all immortal practitioners. The girl doubts that her friend will defeat them alone. The main character asks to look at him more carefully. He twirls the star sword in his hand and heads towards his opponents. Bai Yuan took a step towards his elder brother. He is sure that the strength of the attack does not matter as long as it is at the level of practical energy. Han Po wants to know his opinion about the outcome of events. The man believes that this magical weapon is indeed a very powerful sword. There is no one like him on this meager planet. He has increased in size several times and is eager to join the Jin family. 
the fighters intend to defend themselves. At the tip of Wu Fu's sword, he commands to fall by his sword. A huge stream of energy pierced the opponent's bodies. Lu Xi's grandmother doubts that the guy is at the Yuanshen level. Jin Jun, hysterical, asks to stop Wu Fu. Its fighters try to protect themselves and others, but to no avail. They create a protective dome. The guy assures Jin Rong that the reason for their failures lies in the Star Sword. If it weren't for him, the seconds when the main character could have died would not have been counted. Wu Fu grinned. If his opponents do not fear death, he lets go of the sword. The guy invites you to fight him. Bai Yuan is surprised by his arrogance, although he knows how much stronger his opponents are. The guy was almost killed. Han Po has known Wu Fu for a long time. If he behaves like this, then there is no risk. The Jin family wants to see how the guy can handle them without a magic weapon. Without it, he's just trash. Wu Fu concentrated his energy into his fist and struck his opponent. A hole appeared in his body. With such a low cultivation level, he was not much different from the main character. The guys don't believe that their friend died from one blow. The next opponent uses divine sword formation. Light blue lines surrounded Wu Fu. He thought for a moment and then slammed his fist into the ground. His opponent was thrown far to the side. The main characters headed towards the rest of the Jin family. They are also too weak for him. After the attack, the guys lie down and hold their heads in pain. Jin Rong was left alone with Li Meng Yao next to her. Wu Fu approached them and asked who killed Jin Kang. At the same time, he looked straight into the eyes of his ex-girlfriend. Out of fear for her life, she confessed that in fact it was she who killed the heir of the family. Jin Rong is shocked by this news. Everything is over. Meng Yao doesn't want to give up easily. She uses the power of 100 demonic deities. Behind her is a black flag, and there are red particles in the air that look like blood. She noticed a giant red hand. These are the powers of Wu Fu. Jin Rong is horrified by what kind of monster she got involved with. The main character grabbed Li Meng Yao and held him with one hand in a huge red fist. Now she will pay for making him angry. Wu Fu threw the girl to the ground at his feet. Meng Yao begs for mercy because he doesn't want to die. Tears are flowing down her cheeks. Wu Fu kicked her and ordered her to leave. Ching Ching asked what the girl got out of her attempt at revenge. Li Meng Yao still has the opportunity to escape. She looked at Miss Xu and Xiao Ha with crazy eyes. The dark flag appeared in the air again. Lo Shi asks you to be careful. Dark smoke enveloped Ching Ching and the dog. He lifted them into the air. The girl asks Wu Fu for help. Her eyes slowly close. Miss Chu and Xiao Ha became her hostages. Now the main character will never let her leave. While in the smoke, Xiao Ha began to bark. No one expected that the Wu Fu dog could transform. Xiao Ha managed to save himself and Ching Ching. Now they are falling rapidly. They are rescued by Wu Fu and gently placed on the ground. The dog barks joyfully and licks the girl's nose. She asks not to do this. Lucy came to Miss Chu's aid. Li Ming Yao does not escape about Wu Fu. He took out the star sword and then stabbed it into his ex-girlfriend's body. She fell a few meters away near Jin Rong. Grandma Lucy asked her assistants to go get her. Meng Yao tries to crawl. The girls surrounded her and Jin Rong. The old woman doesn't know what to do. Zi Wan thought that the Jin family had always had an ongoing feud. They could not return to Wu Fu to take revenge. He will decide to end the conflict. In case all misunderstandings are resolved, he suggests leaving hatred in the past. Jin Rong remained silent and Zi Wang continued his speech. Since Wu Fu is his master's friend, in the future, if the Jin family tries to harm him, they will definitely provide their support. Wu Fu asked who Zi Wang thought he was. Bai Yuan called the main character reckless. Li Meng Yao still didn't lose. She suggested that Jin Rong join forces to put an end to the common enemy. 
the woman believes that if there is anyone to blame for what is happening, who is it Li Meng Yao with his disrespect? Jin Rong decided to unite their forces and they would sort out their differences when they defeated Wu Fu. Ching Ching asks him to be careful. Jin Rong and Meng Yao are playing with fire. They took up arms against the main character. Li Ming Yao is sure that she will not be so easy to kill. Wu Fu wished them to go to hell and disappeared from view. Jin Rong was confused when she hit with her magic weapon, but the enemy was not there. The soil parted towards her. Meng Yao noticed Wu Fu behind Jin Rong. The girl screamed, but it was too late. The old woman slowly turned around and saw only the blade of the sword. Wu Fu cut her head into two pieces. Li Meng Yao does not believe that Jin Rong is dead. Thunder erupted in the sky. Looks like it's time for the 30-year-old VT Tong to change. Grandma Lucy doesn't know much about the technique of using the Star Sword Ka Wu Fu. He has incredible abilities. She ordered her people to follow her orders to protect Wu Fu if the Jin family came. Meng Yao wonders why the guy didn't kill her. He looked back. The girl believes that he cannot do this. Ever since he left her, she thought about him all the time. The main characters stopped and laughed. These actions caused Li Meng Yao to be puzzled. The star sword pierced her body. Wu Fu didn't do this earlier because he didn't want to stain his weapon with her blood. The girl laughed. She curses Wu Fu. Bai Yuan warns his elder brother that if he had not hidden his face, he would definitely have died at the hands of Wu Fu. Han Po disagrees with him. He shouldn't continue to trust his intuition because there are a lot of enemies around who need Wu Fu. Bai Yuan doesn't remember his brother ever being interested in earthly matters. He believes that he must urgently get rid of Wu Fu. Zhongyang Sect, Main Hall. The man holds a vessel in his hand and reports the death of Jin Rong. Another person came to them. He considers Li Meng Yao to be the master's pawn. Obviously, the elder needs to teach her a lesson. Hotel room. Ching Ching will take a bath. When she was about to leave, something pissed her off. Xiao Ha sits near the entrance. He likes to look at a naked girl. When Miss Xu noticed him, she threw the vile dog out of the room. Wu Fu was nearby. He heard the girl insult Xiao Ha, calling him disgusting. She believes that his owner is as much a lover of girls as his dog. She might as well. Ching Ching didn't finish. She was stopped by the appearance of Wu Fu. The guy wants to hear the continuation of her statements. The girl asks him to leave. For some reason, she closed her eyes. Wu Fu said that we need to take cover elsewhere. Ching Ching was angry. The next day, at the main gate of the South China Martial Arts Academy, this is the highest martial arts academy in the city. Lu Ling's clothes are very provocative and attractive. This irritates Miss Xu, especially since her breasts were nowhere near Lu Ling's. Wu Fu asks them not to make noise and not to forget why they are here. Xiao Ha barked. A red-haired guy is standing. He assumed that Wu Fu came for the sake of a showdown. The main character clarified what we were talking about. The guy pointed his finger at the hooligan who was addressing him. That man thinks he scared the martial arts academy student. When he is ignored, all he can do is abandon his politeness. The guy with the bat noticed a man with glasses. He called him a four-eyed bookworm and ordered him to stop now. Lu Ling suggested that they should help him, but Wu Fu and Ching Ching ignored her. They eat very tasty watermelon. Lu Ling doesn't understand why these three are so calm. The bully with the bat thinks that the guy with the glasses will be the first person he beats up today. A second later, the upstart was already lying on the ground. He was taught a lesson by a student with glasses. Wu Fu concluded that he had arrived where he needed to. The guy with glasses asked the bully why he was looking for him. Immense power emanates from him. Wu Fu was approached by two students from the South China Martial Arts Academy. They did not recognize the main character they met in the hotel lobby. Thinking that this was some kind of garbage, they decided to show that this was their place. One of them approached Wu Fu and put his hand on his shoulder to turn him to face him. They have an old tradition.
You need to make the scum fall to their knees and make them sing. It looks like something is wrong. When the main character turned around, the students of the South China Martial Arts Academy recognized him and were dumbfounded. The leader pretended that his hemorrhoids had returned. He left Wu Fu to his friends. The protagonist offered Xiao Ha the spiritual stones in his opponent's pockets. There must be a lot of them there. The bully thought that his opponent was seeking death. The guys think that Wu Fu is exaggerating, but Xiao Ha has transformed into a huge dog. Previously, it was a little puppy, but now that little dog has grown so much. Xiao Ha growled at them, so much so that the guys leaned in the direction of the wind. The dog didn't stop barking. The guys don't know what Xiao Ha is going to do. Ching Ching explained that he wanted to eat their spirit stones. Thus, he asks for food. They will give their spirit stones to Wu Fu's pet now. The main character was happy to hear this. Lu Ling said that there are many talented students at the South China Martial Arts Academy. It's worth letting your guard down. The guys have run out of all the crystals. Xiao Ha got enough and turned back. The guys breathed a sigh of relief. One of them saved these crystals for two years and the second for three. Another student came. He heard that someone had started a fight at the main gate and guessed that someone was Wu Fu. The main character examined him carefully. The guy promises to knock out Wu Fu with one blow, and if he doesn't want that, who should kneel down and beg for mercy? And then their captain might forgive him somehow. Their captain is at the eternal world level, so it only takes a couple of seconds for him to kill Wu Fu. The main character slapped the upstart. This one flew several meters away. Lu Ling is funny how the academy students use their minds to make stupid threats. The people standing nearby did not expect to see this. If that guy is so useless, he better shut up. Three arrows were fired towards the main character, which he noticed and stopped in time. A teacher approached a group of students. He praised Wu Fu for his abilities. They are good enough to be arrogant at the main entrance of the academy. If he had come a little later, whoever was a student at his academy would have been dead. The guy does not agree that he could die at the hands of a cultivator at the Yuanshan level. He can fight people of this level. The teacher cannot force him not to seek his death. The student promises to make Wu Fu pay for the humiliation. The teacher has heard a lot about Yonghai University. He is glad to see guests from there. Lu Ling asked if there were many arrogant idiots in this academy. The man assumed that she was the same. This made her angry. They arrived at the spacious hall to confront Wu Fu and the academy students. The teacher said that he was the first to come to them for the sake of fighting. But his student added that he would be the last to do so. At the same time, he will be Wu Fu's opponent. The main character considers him not strong enough and wonders whether there are any worthy cultivators left in the academy. The guy is beside himself with Wu Fu's insult. He rushed at him with his fists. Wu Fu would not be able to withstand even one blow from him. But despite this, he came to their academy to prove himself. The spectators noticed that instead of Wu Fu, there was a clone in front of them, the real enemy behind the student of their academy. The teacher asks you to stop, but it's too late. The guys swung at each other. Their fists collided in impact. The guy is unfamiliar with such power. His bones were cracked and his body was thrown to the side. Wu Fu said that he did not have the strength to resist him. He asks to bring someone who really knows how to fight. The teacher checked the first opponent. He's still breathing. This is great news. This academy is full of gifted practitioners. Don't think that no one can hurt Wu Fu. There aren't that many of them anyway. Lu Ling turned to Mr. Jian, Wu Fu member of the Student Council of Yunhai University. That time, it was he who arrived with his comrades at their educational institution to show off. And now it's their turn. They will still see how Jian continues to exalt himself above the rest. Ching Ching liked her speech. A group of students came in. They suggested that they could help accomplish what Wu Fu asked. They believe that any other schools are just trash compared to them. In their opinion, Yunhai students are very arrogant. Before they had time to arrive, they had already beaten everyone who came along the way and they were just ordinary students. 
Miss Chu reproached them for their lack of politeness. She believes that those people deserved to be punished. Now he is going to condemn them. The guy thinks Ching Ching is completely impolite. She deserves punishment even more than he does. The girl asks Wu Fu to beat him to a pulp. The main character did not react to this. When the guy heard the name of the Yonghai University student, he recognized him. It's a pleasant surprise to see him here. Fate itself brought Wu Fu. The whole of Wutong is looking for him. If the guy hands over the main character to the Jin family, then 10 million will be in his pocket. Look at your picture on the ad. Wu Fu didn't agree that he was so scary. They couldn't even portray him properly. It's infuriating. The guy is going to arrest him and suggest that he be more serious. Lu Ling doesn't see the need to use a sword to kill a chicken. She wants to deal with him on her own. The girl took out her weapon. Her opponent's henchman noticed that she called his boss a chicken. The guy is not deaf. He heard it himself. No need to repeat it. Now everyone has definitely heard. He is ready to fight with the garbage from Yunhai University. He asks everyone to watch carefully. The guy flew into the air and dodged Lu Ling's blow. A member of his gang reported that the elder was excellent with a spear. He never misses a beat. Lu Ling doesn't live. The guy invites the girl to test his spear. She just grinned. Lu Ling will be able to stand up for herself. Ching Ching wants to help her. Wu Fu stops her. He is confident that the girl can handle it on her own, despite the fact that this is a South Chinese martial arts academy and there are a lot of talented practitioners here. Wu Fu suggested to Ching Ching to just observe. The guy asks Lu Ling to apologize to him and then let him have fun with her. Then he will let her go. The girl wants to see how much his determination is enough. In the future, she should not reproach his heartlessness. He struck Lu Ling. The girl didn't expect it to be so powerful. Apparently, she is forced to release all her power. The guy thinks that with a level like hers, it's better for her to stop. He doesn't have time to bother with her. His fans admire his fight from the stands. Ching Ching asks him to come down, then she will beat him to death. The guy invited her to join them, but Lu Ling asks him to look at her, that is, at his opponent. Offers to test the strength of her whip. The guy invited her to scratch his back with a whip. Wu Fu is surprised that her opponent is going to use his unique aim. Looks like he's completely lost his mind. The guy approached Lu Ling from behind, but the girl knows about it. She fought him back with a whip, leaving a cut on his face. Lu Ling asks to show what else he can do. This is interesting. The guy began to quickly move around her, thinking that the girl would not be able to detect him. But he was deceived. He acted stupidly. Lu Ling swung her whip once and rolled it around her opponent's body. The guy can't move anymore. It's securely connected. Lu Ling clarified who would have fun with whom. Wu Fu asks her not to waste her time. They still have a lot to do. The knitted enemy asks the girl for forgiveness. He admitted that he made a mistake and asks to let him go, promising that he will never do anything like that again. Xiao Ha barks at him. Wu Fu asked if there were any blade fragments nearby because he knew that this guy was also looking for them. There is someone else nearby. The main character was not mistaken. It turned out that besides him, two more groups of people asked about the fragments. Now, these people are in the guest room of their student council. The guy asks to forgive him. Meanwhile, in the guest room of the student council, the lifeless bodies of the dead lie on the floor. The guy led from the student council office. Lu Ling wanted to open the door, but Wu Fu stopped her. He feels that something is wrong here. Ching Ching smelled a pungent and disgusting smell. Xiao Ha started barking. Blood came out of the door crack. Lu Ling suggested leaving this place. It is no longer possible to stay there, but it's too late. They were surrounded by a crowd of people outside. Some guy said that he saw a group of people rushing inside and he also heard screams and screams. Someone told the Academy's student council president that the killers were still inside and they must hurry to save their students. The president believes that even though the killer is inside the student council room, it is most likely that Lee and the others are already dead. The door swung open. Miss Ju came out. 
She asked what was wrong with their school. First, they provoked them and now they accuse them of murder. Outsiders have always been prohibited from entering the student council office. No one thinks that after they were found there, they are still not guilty. Ching Ching said that if they didn't hide the knee fragments here, no one would come here. The guy realized that Wu Fu and his friends were also here because of the mysterious fragments. He took out a weapon and put it to Ching Ching's throat. He wants to know who sent them, Yunhai University or they came up with it themselves. Wu Fu interrupted their conversation. He believes that he does not need anyone's permission to return what belongs to him. The guy feels their presence here. They ask him not to pretend that everything in the world belongs to him. They want to know who he thinks he is. After killing those people, the students will not let him go from here easily. Wu Fu recommends searching for the real criminal instead of suspecting them. The guys do not advise him to argue with them. Some of them heard that the blade belonged to Wu Fu. He offered to explain to the others where the sword marks on the walls came from. More and more students at the South China Martial Arts Academy were inclined to believe that Wu Fu and his friends were responsible for the murder. If not, then why were they in a hurry to leave this place? Ching Ching looked around and actually saw sword marks on the walls. When they came here, they weren't there. Lu Ling asks him to stop blaming them for something they didn't do. Their presence here is just a coincidence. The president is outraged that the guest dared to kill a member of his student council because of some pathetic fragments. The main character claims that they did not kill anyone. The president says that they are almost here to summon the dragon, but Wu Fu and his friends continue to deny it. The girls felt enormous power. On the roof of a high-rise building nearby are Bai Yuan and Zi Wang. They do not know the origin of Wu Fu. He is so arrogant that if they don't deal with him soon, he will ruin all their plans in the future. Zhongyang School took away the shards. The head of the Jin family is about to leave the country. Everyone in Wutong knows about the deaths of Jin Rong and Jin Kang. In this situation, Wu Fu will not last long. This is great news for Bai Yuan. The refining of the spirit accumulation pill will soon be completed. If you liked the video, then subscribe to the channel and write a comment about what you liked. All the best. See you soon.